Welcome to Midwest Paranormal Presents Paranormal Soup. I'm your host, Jason Bland. And even though I might not sound like it tonight, I have a horrible cold <laughs> and uh, just hanging by a thread with my voice. But I did not want to cancel the show because we got a great guest tonight. Terry, and I forgot to ask this, so I apologize, Terry, in advance if I butcher this, but her Terry Huberman, I believe that's how she says her name. I, that's one question I always forget to ask during sound check. But Terry Huberman, if I got that right, is an intuitive coach. And uh, we're going to talk about her um, abilities as a psychic and as a medium. Um, we will, of course, take phone calls later in the show. Uh, if you do call in and want a reading, uh, I have talked to Terry. She will maybe give you like a psychic insight, uh, but no mediumship. That, not that kind of reading. Not a good place to do it on a show anyways. And of course, what we do every Sunday night is the World Wide Web of Weird. Hopefully it's not the World Wide Phlegm of Weird because, man, I got it bad tonight. Um, but my Paranormal Soup team's here with me, Jamie and Rob and Jeff and Bill. Bill's even here to help me out tonight. These guys are going to chip in. You know, I talk paranormal with these guys all the time. I've been telling them they need a chip in and talk some more on this show and this is their night so the paranormal soup team's gonna help me out when i'm like dying <laughs> all right guys be with you in just a sec Welcome to another night of Paranormal Soup. As I said before, I'm your host, Jason Bland. We're streaming live out to Facebook and on Late Night in the Midlands Radio Network. Go donate, subscribe, do what you can to help keep this great network alive. Um, without you, we wouldn't have all these great hosts. So subscribe. And, and you know what? Subscribe to the network and subscribe to the other hosts. Some of the hosts need your help to keep their shows going, too. Anything you can do to help. Uh, that's, we depend on you. You want good entertainment. That's what we're trying to do. Of course, I'm saying this as I sound like total junk. My voice is so trash tonight. So bear with me. I will try to keep the mute myself and keep the disgusting noises from uh, happening on this show. And that's why I, I, I always, I've never been a single host. I always have friends on a panel, co-hosts. And uh, I've always had these guys or my team. So we're going to bring them on. Uh, let's see. We'll bring on my beautiful co-host for first, maybe. Oh, there's my beautiful co-host, Bill Perry. <laughs> Bill Perry, how are you doing tonight, Bill? <laughs> good. Even Bill's chipping in tonight. He, he usually stays for the ITC shows. and But, you know, we're going to get into the paranormal realm. That's totally up your alley, Bill. Totally. It's not aliens tonight or anything. Maybe. You never know where the conversation might go. And, of course, my, my, my truly beautiful co-host, Jamie D. How are you doing tonight, Jamie? Doing great. How are you doing besides being sick? Good, good. I just, I, you know how much I hate doing these shows when I have the tickle, that, that, that stupid tickle fine. in your throat. So bear with me on the World Wide Web of uh, Weird because, like I said, it might be the phlegm of weird. I don't know. And then uh, I don't know if he's there. His, he doesn't have his screen up. I just see his picture. You there, Rob? Rob from St. Augustine, Florida? Rob might have had to step away for a minute, but he, he should be back. Let's hope so. And then, of course, Jeffrey Chan is here, our uh, video engineer for the World Wide Web of Weird. And speaking of that, let's go ahead and roll into the World Wide Web of Weird. Now, you see, I'm already screwing stuff up. I'm already screwing stuff up because, man, I'm just off my game. You think I would have better with, like, the time change, you know, get some sleep? No, my kids were up at 6 a.m. They don't know that it's daylight saving time's ended. Okay, let's try this again. World Wide Web of Weird. <laughs> Tonight on the World Wide Web of Weird, we're going to go back to a story we covered months ago. 
um, I always forget the name of the show that this lady's been on a couple times. But I'm sure you're all very familiar with the story because, I mean, every I think even I saw my guests post this on Facebook. Like, people are like, I just can't. Well, uh, I can. I can talk about it. Woman claims that she is engaged to a ghost. You remember this story? We had it a couple months ago or longer. I think it might have been longer. Is the woman who says she has sex with a ghost and has a relationship with a ghost. Yes. <laughs> All right, for people listening on Late Night in the Midlands Radio Network, we are a webcast that you can see at our Facebook page, Midwest Paranormal Presents Paranormal Soup, where we share videos and articles and pictures and all kinds of good stuff, but I try to narrate as best I can. Of course, it ain't going to be that good tonight. (laughs) I'm hanging in there. All right, but this first story is from London Explained Mysteries. It's been all over. A number of people have uh, covered it. Spiritual guidance counselor Amethyst Realm has taken her otherworldly relationship one step further. The 30-year-old, who has previously spoken openly about meeting a ghost in Australia and entering into a relationship with it, with it is, isn't it a he, right? Um, I guess it's an it now, uh, is now planning on getting married to her uh, phantom suitor. Or it's the gender thing, no gender identity, I don't know. The spirit is allegedly proposed during a tour on the, uh, the Wookiee Hole Caves in Somerset. Halfway through the tour, he told me, this is from her. Uh, he wanted to hang back from the group, she told the son. That's when it happened. There was no going down on one knee. Wow, I could go so many places with that. He doesn't even have a knee. <laughs> oh, my God. But uh, that's what she said, actually. Uh, but for the first time, I heard him speak. It's hard to explain, but until that point, his words were inside my head. But on that day, the words were outside. I could actually hear his voice, and it was beautiful. You know, I don't doubt this woman's claims. It could be really true. I mean, she could really be having a relationship with uh, an entity on the other side. We laugh, but what if she is? What if she's really having this relationship? What are the consequences of that? You know? I mean, she's talked about wanting to have his child. Well, I don't know how that works. You know? I, I, I think it might turn into something like the omen. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's just my ignorant thinking. You know, equal I'm rights. This one. <laughs> I've seen so many comment that way. So many comment that way. Uh, While the unorthodox couple have yet to plan the specifics of the wedding, Amethyst has indicated that she's looking to conceive a child with her new fiancé. Exactly how that would work, however, is anyone's guess, is what the article says. Um, This was a Halloween uh, Amethyst on a UK TV show. That's what it was this morning. That's what we first saw her on. We're not going to play their show, but um, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> man, we laugh, but I mean, she could be really having a relationship. I've, this is not the first time I've heard that um, from people. You can have a relationship with somebody on the other side. Now, usually when people do, it's a loved one that's passed on that they knew, you know, and I get that. But when you just, like, meet a strange ghost, she doesn't really know what he looks like. She calls him it. I mean, that's kind of messed up, you know. Give him an... an I, I mean, I'm sure he has a name, I, but you know, I don't ever think I've heard the name in one of these interviews. She has to keep it secret? I don't know. But she... she... Oh, maybe his name's Pennywise. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, well. I, I don't know, but, I mean, he gets her rocks off. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let's move All on. Right. All right, we got some UFO stuff here. Uh, I saw this on Coast to Coast, so I know people are like, oh, you shouldn't do Coast to Coast because it's a competing network. I'm sorry, that is the only place I found it. You know, we were talking about our, um, Argentina and stuff there, so it's kind of what I wanted to cover when we had Heather Wade on last Sunday. Well, this one is, and I was going to play it last Sunday, and I totally forgot, and I think, I, I think part of my mind was like, oh, I got three stories from Argentina? No, let's not. But uh, this was a good one. I don't know why I forgot about this one. Um, this is a newscast. Uh, an Argentina television came to a screeching halt last week when the anchor spotted an unidentified flying object soaring over the city of Buenos Aires. The strange sighting reportedly occurred on the program Manas Argentinas last Wednesday morning. An anchor, Maria Fernandez, was standing in front of a giant screen which showed the city skyline and marveling at the unsettling amount of smog in the air, she suddenly caught the sight of the UFO. And there, see her like pointing up at it. You know, it. I don't know what that is. It's it's weird looking. Um, it, looks like a, it's not a it could be a balloon, but it looks like it would have to be pretty big to be a balloon. You know, maybe a weather balloon falling down or something. I don't know. 
It is odd. It did get her attention. I didn't have the audio because you don't understand a word they're saying. But unless you you might, I shouldn't assume people don't know. I mean, my, my, people might speak Argentina. I don't know what. I don't even know what they speak there. Sorry, I'm ignorant. Uh, but um, especially tonight, uh, cold medicine will do that. But <laughs> it is weird uh, what she sees there, and I love the. Re it's just I love like the real time reactions. They were just doing this newscast talking about the smog. That's a great topic, and they see this UFO. It's awesome. Yeah, when uh, you know you see it live like that on something. Yeah, imagine if you were watching this in Argentina and you turn on the news and got the hot weather lady talking about the smog. That's a bit depressing. And then a UFO shows up. Don't happen every day. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. All right, so we got a couple different uh, businesses here with CCTV footage of ghostly activity. The first one. Uh, this comes from Unexplained Mysteries. CCTV video sparks ghost rumors in restaurant footage recorded in an Albuquerque branch of Dion's show kitchen uh, equipment moving all on its own. The strange instance was detailed in a posting on a restaurant's chain's Facebook page this week and appears to have been have captured on a CCTV at the time when nobody else was in the building. In the video, a metallic shelf or cover that was sitting on top of the kitchen counter can be seen suddenly moving sideways. Go ahead and I think we got the news clip here. Go ahead and play it. Surveillance video has many people wondering, was there a ghost at an Albuquerque Dion's? Let's take a closer look. The restaurant posted this Facebook video of its store on Morse and Montgomery. They say, look closely. We think one of our stores is haunted. It appears something falls from a counter with no one nearby. Many people have weighed in on social media saying a ghost was probably just looking for some of that famous Dion's ranch. That ranch must be good. But, you know, could it be a rat? They got big rats? I don't know. It was like scurrying around there. We just don't see it. It's my only thought. Maybe. But, it, man, it moves that shelf with some force. Definitely weird. I even thought for a second, I wondered if it, if something like was rocking or if there's a little earthquake and it came off. or. Right. It doesn't look like it's slamming. Nothing else really. is really moving, you know. It just, like, knocks yeah. the whole shelf off. So that's the first one. And they've had other hauntings and stuff there. I'm not going to get into it. I'm going to run out of time. Uh, this next one probably has its critics. If they said this place was haunted, it'd be like, yeah, sure, sure. No, not that video. Uh, this should be number four from KGW.com. An Oregon marijuana shop haunted. Watch surveillance video. This has been very viral. Um, or let me see. Oh, my article went nuts. I don't want that. Uh, in Oregon, a marijuana shop haunted. Watch surveillance video. Andy Gomez was working at the counter of the marijuana store by himself when a surveillance video shows a glass tip jar slowly siding off the edge of a level counter. Oregon City uh, is almost... It's almost Halloween, but things are, are pretty spooky at Oregon City Marijuana Shop. Employees at Five Zero Trees have been seeing some strange things, and some think it might be haunted. All right, go ahead and play a little bit of the clip here. At least that's the theory behind paranormal activity witnessed at Five Zero Trees, a cannabis dispensary. Yes. Behold, if you dare, this surveillance video from August. Watch the glass tip jar on the counter. Slowly, it starts to move. That's Andy Gomez next to it. As it was happening, I kind of felt like somebody was standing next to me or like somebody was like right here. Suddenly, the jar falls off the level surface. Okay, that just happened. Then Andy remembered the surveillance camera. And like, we saw the jar and like, we saw the jar do its thing. <laughs> Not long after that, this happened. Watch the pen cup. It's completely still and no one's around when suddenly the pens begin to move. And if you think the video has been doctored, a cannabis shop that would be against the law and those are state certified videos gm samantha davidson says at the turn of the century this building space was used as a pharmacy i feel like it's the pharmacist because he likes to organize things i'll leave it to the at least that's in the video um but yeah they can't tamper with those cameras i mean that's the real deal there's stuff moving that's there yeah, I mean, it totally takes, it's like, I'm going to take your tips there, stoner. You're not going to know. Yeah, I'm going to be a ghost, and I'm going to go back, and I'm going to haunt a pot shop. That, that's my plan. Because, man, that would be fun. Mess with some stoners. Pinch the oh, tip. yeah. Like, you're high? You think you're high now? <laughs> Let me float this tip jar right in front of you. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I mean, it's pretty cool. Like I said, they can't mess with the cameras. Um... 
you know, they got, they were experiencing stuff. You know, you wonder what the ghost is trying to do. They say they think it's an old pharmacist. Um, what's he want with her tip jar? I don't know. Maybe he's just trying to get just their attention. Yeah. And so he organizes. Yeah, keeping it clean. Maybe but, he wanted to buy it. He didn't have money. Yeah. Yeah, this one's been pretty viral. I almost had it on the last week's World Wide Web of Weird, but it came out a little late when I already had the World Wide Web of Weird planned. Uh, so I figured I'd save it, just like that, um, the video of the UFO. Um, but, you know, I was... You know, I love that. I love the human interaction, like that security guard at that school. And he saw the ghost. You know, you see the guy look around, like, what happened? It's pretty cool. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. Number five here. This is some UFO stuff again. This is from sightings.info.com. If I can get this to load, let's see here. Okay. All right. This video was sent uh, to a UFO uh, to UFO by a subscriber in Scotland. She lives near their town of Kippen in Scotland. On September first, uh, two thousand eighteen, she suddenly heard a loud bang outside her apartment. She rushed to her balcony with her camera, and she noticed a UFO flying erratically near a uh, hill nearby. And uh, for people who are listening, you're going to uh, what we're going to show here is this fiery thing in the sky, it likes trailing fire. Now, we'll watch it, and I'll make my comments. So it, possibly could be but there's some weirdness to it the object was dropping a lot of glowing material while flying she did not know what the object was but she was sure that it was not something man-made it did not produce any sound at all when i uh, analyzed the footage i noticed the object ejected a lot of material is this the stuff tom DeLong is looking for i don't know what they mean by that i've not kept up on tom DeLong. but um it something man-made it did not whoa, produce whoa. any sound at all when i uh, why am analyzed I hearing myself i'm hearing myself that was me. So, yep, watch it there, Rob. Okay. Um, oh, he's trying to get the video to play. Hold on. Oh, no. We had it playing before. He had it playing a second ago. There we go. So, yeah, you're going to see this. Um, now, my, my, my main thought on this is that, you know, there's skydivers and stuff that um, do these flare deals. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll skydive and um, they'll use flares. But the way this moves is really odd if it's that but i have seen footage of some skydivers doing something similar but this is really weird and then at the end the other thing is, is i wouldn't say skydivers the more likely thing is some kind of plane ejecting some kind of flare a military flare of some kind is possible because i wouldn't think it's skydivers because of what happens um at the end of the video and i think i got i hope i got this here it's always the finish that is the clue. And when you don't see the finish of the ufo or how it takes off i get suspect see there it goes it stops it's still kind of glowing and then it takes off. I don't know. I wonder if it could be a drone of some sort with something yeah. on it, some sort of fireworks like, type. Right. Things. That's what I was wondering. I don't know. Or was it a something hit by a military and it is a UFO? I don't know. That's pretty crazy. It's weird. I definitely raises the eyebrows. It, the, the flare possibility of being in either a plane or a drone to me is a big possibility, but it's still odd to me because you notice when it stops and it flies off, it's still glowing. It's just one glowing ball, which is odd to me. Because this is pretty much at night, you know, to see it, you, know, you need some, some land, you neither, you, you don't see, one thing you don't see if it's a plane, um, you don't see the, the green and red lights, you know, you don't see uh, a lot of stuff coming off. Yeah, it would seem pretty dangerous for a plane to do, maybe a drone. But it's a lot. There's and it, see how it, it's weird how it moves. Like the way the, the the flames move around it. It's I can't figure this one out. Um, this one's odd to me. At first, when I first saw it, I was like, "Oh, this is another flare one." But as I watched it, and especially the end of it, it made me wonder. The movement is what's so weird about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. what makes me think of a, a drone. You know the way. You could just make it move in all different directions really easily. But even the way, though, that the tail's going separate than the, than the <coughs> drone itself, if that was a drone, you're yes, seeing excuse me, sorry. some tail yeah, taking a turn. Yeah, but if there's something attached to it, like a strip of something that's burning. Could be, it could right. Be True. Like the tail of a kite. You know, and it's just dragging it along. But look at this oh, end part right here with the way it flies off. I don't know. The way it's still glowing. Still could be a drone though with a light yeah. on it. Yeah. Maybe. Drones I don't know. It seems odd. It seems odd. I don't know. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. 
Number six, this one's from Florida, but it's nothing bad, Rob. It's nothing bad. It's another haunting story. I, I thought of this one I thought was cool because last week with Heather Wade, we were talking about the Titanic, uh, a pub that had a lot of memorabilia. Well, what if a pub was moved from London, you know, 1800s London, to Florida? So this old pub was transported to Florida from London, and a terrifying ghost came with it. There's a pub, pub I cannot talk, in Florida that has haunted history like no other, not just because of the type of ghosts, which are said to freak in the spot, because of where the actual pub came from. Going back to the 19th century London town, the days of Jack Ripper prowled the dark streets. Take a look at the spectacular pub with a rich, jarring history. We're not going to get into all this because we're running behind time, but this is the pub, the Blue Anchor, uh, in Florida, what part does it say? It was built in the 1800s. Um, it's almost 150 years old in uh, Delray Beach, Florida, is where you can find it. And they have all kinds of activity. I didn't post all the pictures of it. Um, but I find it interesting. This article is from uh, onlyinyourstate.com. Um, Haunted Pub, Florida. Look it up. Uh, but it's really interesting. A lot of stuff they have happening there. And you, you wonder about attachments to objects. What happens when you move a whole building? Across the ocean, and then they actually have specific ghosts. They think is from the the original pub that's there. Um, they said uh, Elizabeth Stride and Catherine Eddowes were said to have spent their last night alive at the Blue Anchor before uh, Jack the Ripper killed them. So even Jack the Ripper's own victims had spent time in this pub. So if I go down to Florida, Rob, and we're gonna meet up, we should meet up at this place, the Blue Anchor. Hey, okay, I'm game. All right, I got to move on though because I don't want to get too far, but we're going to get run in here. Uh, this is another interesting article. This is from FoxNews.com. This one's short, but it uh, I found this really interesting. Psychic ghost hunters helped Long Island man find de- a dad's remains, 57 year uh, old mystery. Bones found in a Long Island basement were discovered after a family consulted as psychic and paranormal investigators, according to reports. Mike Carroll, 57, is convinced the bones belong to his father, a Korean War vet who mysteriously disappeared nearly 60 years ago. Uh, George Carroll was living at Lake Grove when he vanished in 1961, leaving behind a wife and four children ranging in ages from eight months to nine years old. The children never received a straight answer from their mother, Dorothy Carroll, on what happened to the father. Dorothy died in 1988. The bones were discovered Halloween Eve, Tuesday, in the spot in the basement that had been flagged by a psychic. So they dug there because a psychic told them there's bones here, and they had always heard rumors that their dad was buried in their basement. That's all there is to the story. I would love to know more. Like, what was going? Was the family dynamic for that one? You know, mom did mom kill dad and bury him in the basement? But pretty cool that a psychic pointed to the exact spot where the bones were, and there were bones, and they think it's their dad. It hasn't been tested yet, but they're pretty sure it's their dad. What a gruesome find for a family family mystery. But I thought this story was pretty cool. Check it out at foxnews.com. And that's it for the World Wide Web Weird. We've got a great guest tonight, Terry Huberman, if I'm getting that right, I hope. Uh, we're going to have on an intuitive psychic coach. Uh, we're going to talk to her tonight. We will have the phone lines open later. And bear with me. I am hanging in there. My voice is barely hanging in there. Uh, but that's why we got Jamie, Rob, and Bill to chip in tonight um, to join us. Uh, for guys... Um, we're watching on Facebook. We also are on Late Night in the Midlands Radio Network. We used to play cabaret music out there. We don't anymore. Um, but we do have commercial breaks, so just hang on a second. We will be right back with you uh, with our guest, Terry Huberman, intuitive coach. And like I said, the phone lines are open now. You can call in, but you're going to have to wait because I want to get into our guests. So I won't even give them out yet. But if you know the numbers, you can call and wait if that's up to you. But it's up to you. You have to wait because we want to talk to our great guest. All right, guys, we'll be back with you in just a few minutes.
tonight on Paranormal Soup. Our guest is Terry Hooverman, intuitive coach. Terry comes from a family of intuitive women and learned she was a medium when she started to investigate the paranormal claims in various locations. Having taken many courses and certifications requiring vigorous study and validation in psychic mediumship, uh, IET, guided meditations, Reiki, and Akashic records, she's been publicly tested and validated as authentic and eth- ethical and does it all with a side of a compassion and kindness. She has a uh, background in improv comedy, so she'll do great on here. Uh, so her approach to ses- uh, sessions will always include using humor, laughter, as healing. Man, that, that she's going to be a perfect guest for this show because that's totally what I believe in. She's always open to self-growth and improvement and continues to take courses in various healing mo- modalities and finds an important to always be striving to learn more so that she can help others heal. Her goal is the, that her clients leave working with her feeling empowered and courageous on their journey towards their goals so that they can achieve their freedom, security, and joy. She's, able, she's available for one, uh, one-on-one private readings or soul coaching. It can be found at HTTPB. Uh, the website is terryhuberman.com, T-E-R-R-I-E-H-U-B-E-E-R-M-A-N.com. A lot of the links are in the show description. Uh, you can go there. We will take phone calls in the show. Like I said, Terry does have mediumistic abilities, but if you call in and have a question, um, maybe a question she can more intuitively psychic, we'll let her explain that tonight, uh, what, what you can call in and do. And, what, uh, and, and, of course, call in with your own stories and your questions to share tonight. That's what it's about. This is an, a paranormal soup. is an open forum for all those who feel like they might be weird, but you're not because there's so many of us that are experiencing the paranormal, and this is why we do this show. Sick or not, <laughs> we are here. So let's get to our guest. All right, let me make sure I got my guest on. Hi, can you hear me? I hear you, Terry. How you doing tonight? Okay. <laughs> Hello. I had to turn your volume up, that's why. There we go. <laughs> off my game a little bit tonight terry i apologize uh I, i'm hanging in there but i'm so glad you're on with us tonight i've been excited to do the show that's why i didn't cancel <laughs> was, i really wanted to do this show with you um so you know i gave my introduction to you but um how you know tell the audience your story how you got involved in this how did you become terry and am i saying the last name right hooverman <laughs> Yeah, you're not butchering it. That's good. You're okay. fine. It's, okay. it's Huberman. That's fine. But if you're my dad, the H is silent, and it's Huberman, which Uberman. I don't understand. Because there's an H. Just say Huberman. You know, Uberman. just call me Terry. How's that? Just call me Terry. <laughs> we'll go with Terry. We'll go with Terry. I am the butcher of names, though, so be honored. I butch- I, I, some way I butchered oh. it. At least your dad would think I butchered it. Oh. So. <laughs> Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, tell us, how, how did you get into this, Terry? I mean, what, what was the steps that took you to where you are now? I'm not sure I actually got into this. I think I was born into this. Um, I, I just, it's generational on my mom's side of the family. My sisters have talents and my mom too. The only difference between myself and them is that I went ahead and I uh, developed these skills more and these talents and I became professional at it. So they have them as well. So it's kind of like a witchy woo kind of family. So, um, you know, I, I it, it's, it's, fa- it's a family run business. Um, <laughs> not really business, but it's just family run. So I did, um, well, let's see. So I've been psychic my entire life, just always having premonitions or just somehow always knowing information, feeling the information. I was, I was that sensitive kid that cried for every little thing <laughs> in school. Everything hurt my feelings. And, and as I was growing up, it was because I was realizing that I was feeling other people's feelings too. And, um, so I was always the crybaby. I'm still pretty much a crybaby, which I'm cool with. Uh, <laughs> nothing wrong with it. <laughs> Listen, you know, I, it, I, I'm, I'm a Leo and I'm like, I'm, I'm right on the cusp of cancer. So I'll go ahead and I'll brag about something and then I'll cry about it. So there you go. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. So I just, um, it's just really, really sensitive. And, um, I, I I come from a Jewish family, so in the um, religion of Judaism, there's a whole mystical side, and so um, which is the Kabbalah. So there was always the Kabbalistic um, 
I don't know what you want to call it, tendencies or whatnot, although traditionally you're not supposed to study Kabbalah unless you're a man who's read the entire Torah. And you got to be a man, right? You have to be a man. Of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. You have to be a man. You have to have read the entire Who Torah. Who came up with that you... rule? That's not fair. <laughs> I didn't, but... <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, but yeah, so although women are considered very holy in the Jewish religion, believe it or not, because they're most like God, because they have the ability to create where men don't. So we usually destroy. <laughs> destroy. Having yeah, two right. boys—that's what I realize is the, <laughs> the, the innate purpose of men or boys is to just destroy. That's destroy. what my boys do—is just destroy. Yeah, it's healthy. That's good. <laughs> Knocked down. Yeah. So um, it, it was like growing up, it was just really um, open in, in, the, in our household. And also my mother is from Cuba. So she grew up um, before she came to America um, because of Castro. She grew up uh, surrounded by Santeria. So there was always this like mystical view or outlook in the family. So I actually am really blessed and I'm lucky that I was able to kind of um, have these talents and not be shushed or lulled from them uh, or because of them. Whereas a lot of people are not that lucky and they have to hide it and it can actually cause some men mental um, disruption. But uh, for me, uh, I was really lucky that I um, was able to just kind of um, just be it. And uh, yeah, so I didn't know I was a medium, though, till I don't know, I think it was like 37, 38 years old. So the mediumship part didn't come in until really late in life. Really? So, I mean, you went as a child, you you, you was open, you know, you would have psychic experiences. Yeah, psychic um, experiences. So, yes. you know, like, so just for the audience to understand the difference, you know, because so like a psychic experience compared to a medium experience, like what were some of the things you would experience as a child that were like psychic and, and, and obviously you had a family that was very open to it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I just, I always knew information and I would have the ability to really connect with people and kind of make them laugh. So I was able to, uh, as an empath, that's what I was in, and still am. I just know how to manage it better now. Um, you know, being able to really understand and get into somebody's energy and kind of heal them without realizing what was happening. Um, I would have premonitions all the time, dreams. I would just say things and they would just kind of come true. When I was, uh, I think I was like about 25 or so, I started playing with tarot cards and just playing with them and uh, just kind of teaching. And this is the traditional writer weight deck. That's what I did. Um, I, yeah, you know, it was about the same age too. I, I got really oh, yeah. interested in it and uh, started off with Rider weight. And you know, I, I I was really good at it. I I, I just didn't go down the path of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't. You know, I had some scary experiences with the tarot. Yeah, I actually oh, did. Really? Yeah, uh, I would do phone readings uh, for friends. I would play poker online, and people were like, "Oh, do me a reading. Call me." And you know, they'd be in wherever in the country. And I I did one guy. And I was getting some dark stuff, and he wouldn't admit to it. And then I turned. It was in the middle of a storm. And I turned, and I had the lights low, and then there's this guy in a suit on my couch, and he looked like a zombie, like a dead guy. Oh, he was there for two seconds. I never did – I've done readings since, but I never did a phone reading. I never did it for a complete stranger like that ever again. Ah, wow. Well, I do that. I do that for, for my business now. <laughs> I, I think uh, I, I think it's such, such a, an amazing thing, the tarot, because of all the symbolism and that, you know, there's so many different messages in just one card. Oh, Yeah. I mean, it, you can spend an entire lifetime um, learning and then obviously delivering the information. I mean, when I do my card readings now, I don't even use Raider, Rider Weight. I just use I use a deck of Loteria cards and then just regular playing cards. Yep, I've done. It's, isn't it amazing the first time you like read somebody with like a regular deck, like just a playing card deck? The first time I ever did it, it was like one of the best readings I ever gave. Oh, yeah. Because then you're not necessarily limited to yeah. what you're seeing seeing and that's the whole idea of all of this is to get out of your head and just connect and be a conduit but when you see pictures or colors or something you just there's this um idea of having to get it right and that's the one of the biggest things um which is your ego that will destroy a true connection and therefore you're not really giving true healing for somebody's highest self and, and all that fun sort of stuff 
So, so yeah, but there's a difference. I think you were starting to ask me, like, what's the difference? Yeah, but between... so you had these psychic experiences as a kid. Yeah. So what's the medium experience? What, what makes yeah. that different? Whew. Well, I had my first mediumship experience. I used to do paranormal investigations. So I was, um, I was, the, they're called sensitives on the team. And um, I had a trans mediumship uh, experience. It was the first first time that's ever happened so like when you get psychic information you, you can get them in so many different ways there's primarily six ways that you would get them you hear a smell taste um know see feel all that all those you know different ways of communication and so one of the things was i was really always just terrified um when i would go on uh, investigations, I always would just kind of have this contract with God because I do believe in God. And I would say, all right, if you want me to do this work, this is, these are the ground rules. <laughs> I do not want to see anybody with my physical eye. Really? <laughs> I do not want to see a dead person with my physical eye. Mm -mm, nope. Nope. Uh -uh. That would scare me. It would like, scare nope. me. It would definitely mm -hmm. scare me, but there's a part of me, yeah. there's the other side of me, and maybe because I'm a Gemini. <laughs> mm, I got that go. split, but there's a, I, I, I know like, you're like, oh, don't let me see something, but let me see something. I want to do, mm -mm. just show me. Just let me there see are, it. <laughs> there are five other take a picture. ways. Yeah, no, uh-uh. There are five other ways to receive that information other than just visually. So okay. I'm like, I'm cool with that. Um, you know, and, and like when I do my readings now, I, I deal with people and when I call people, I mean spirit people who take their own life. You know, I don't want to see that. Right. No. Um, and it's like, I didn't want to see the guy on my couch. That made me quit. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And that's exactly like, I do not want to see that. And especially when you're like doing a lot of investigations in cemeteries mm. or, you're, you know, or you're near, you know, Indian ground or whatever, you know, it's like, no, thank you. I'm happy to do this work. Be of service. Do your, do your work, God. But um, it, I have to set a boundary, and this is how I would do it. So I didn't, my first um, medium, trans mediumship experience, I did not see anything, but boy, oh boy, did I feel it. So what happened was, was that I had um, a spirit come into my body and uh, kind of take over for a bit. And it was a really strange, strange, strange experience because my human brain, my Terry brain was like, I know I'm Terry and I know I'm here, okay, and I'm with the rest of the team. But then there was this other knowing and then feeling sensation where I was like locked in and you just I knew the information. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, it, you know, a, a true mediumistic experience, the energy, human spirit energy, is, is, it's lower vibration than angelic energy. Right. So it's really dense, it's heavy, and it's thick. And when you are conversing with a former human spirit, they do not let you go until they say what they need to say. So mm. you are just like, all right, let's have a seat and talk to me. And then when you're done saying what you need to go, then we'll, you know, we'll go our merry way. But the difference between a regular mediumship session, which is primarily how I work, and then like a trance session, which is when a bot... A, a spirit you allow a spirit to take your body are two different things because that's way more of a physical sensation so um and it was my first time so it was like i knew what was happening but i didn't know what was happening it was very odd and my like i started rocking back and forth i was, was gonna standing. ask like was your you were you being physically moved by this yeah so, yeah, so here's, here's what happened. Like, okay, so my role as the sensitive was always to take notes. Like I had, because I'm downloading, I call it downloading. I'm downloading like data from like the spiritual universe, right? So I'm downloading data and I, and we're sitting in the dark, you know, doing EVP sessions, whatever. And I, they, I'm there with a glow in the dark pen that lights up <laughs> and a notebook. And so I'm writing all my impressions, all the information that right. I get. So what started to happen was that I went into this, I guess you can call it a fugue of automatic writing. I don't, ooh, and so you were, it was more, it was not just a transmedia, you were doing the whole automatic, you were writing. I was doing the whole thing. 
Yeah, wow. yeah. And Anna was crying and hyperventilating all at the same time. It was you were sad. crying and hyperventilating while you were doing it? Yeah, because oh, there's wow. my human body that's going what the mama is going on. Right. Right? And then there's my electromagnetic field going, oh, okay, this is what's happening. There's a blending here of spiritual energy. And then there's, um, you know, the, the protection. I was definitely protected by my spirit team. And, and mediums have what's called a gatekeeper, which is an extra spirit guide, who are basically, it's like crowd control. They let in and out the, the spirit people to kind of like talk to or to, to let them through. Because sometimes spirits will come in like a gaggle of people <laughs> and you're like, I can only deal with one at a time. So that's what like gatekeepers do. So I was totally protected. I was totally fine. But you know, the human Terry side was like, what in the wide, wide world of sports is going on? I've never experienced this before. <laughs> and then there's the spiritual side of like, got to get to work, Terry, got to get to work. So it was like, ah, so it's like your spirit guides were kind of nudging you into this. Yeah. Oh, they didn't quite nudge. They pushed. They pushed right? <laughs> you know, the scariest time, the scariest experience I ever had on an investigation was one of my fellow investigators. She had what we called a walk-in experience, mm -hmm. and um, where she wasn't herself. Like it changed. She doesn't even remember most of it, but it changed mm -hmm. her whole attitude. She was snippy at people, oh, and yeah. at moment she was at one moment she was completely like paralyzed, yeah, and just stuck oh, yeah. in a position. I'm like stuck. Judy. Judy, yeah. and uh, of course I'm giving away who it is, but we've talked about it on the show. Okay. And, uh, you know, somebody drove her home, and uh, she didn't even remember anything, even the ride home, hardly. Wow. You know, so it was a lot of it was a blur, and it was from an investigation. Yeah. That was the scariest time for me, an investigation, because I never want to see anybody get hurt or emotionally or physically, you know. Um, but for her, what, you know, that's a walking experience. There wasn't really any communication. For you, yeah. your guides are kind of giving you this chance, this opportunity to speak. Because I know people have walking experiences. I even yeah. had my own experience. I don't, I don't know if I was transmedium, but I once was at a, a house, and I knew the, the ghost there was a heavy drinker. Mm -hmm. and, I, and he told me his name. I said his first and last name, pretty much nailed his last name. Um, and, it, of course, nailed the first name. And, I mean, I knew there was stuff hidden in the house, War, World War II stuff in there. I knew yeah. all this just from holding a photograph. Now, oh, yeah. I felt a presence. I felt the moment I walked in. But could that be a psychic thing? I mean, could I have yeah. been just, just picking up it psychically and not communicating? But I, I, yeah. what it was is I felt like this little voice in my head telling me. Yeah, yeah no, that's more of a psychic experience. That's what I wondered. Um, and, yeah, and it's, it's actually a part of psychometry. Um because like, I was holding the photo. The picture, yeah. Yeah. Now, it, it can happen. It, it, I mean, if you are a meat, so here's, I'm about to say something, which, like, it. I'm not, how do I say this? I, my community doesn't, I'm not necessarily well-liked in my community because I'm actually extremely skeptical because I was a ghost hunter first, right? And right. what you do as a ghost hunter is you debunk first exactly. before you say anything is paranormal. So I am, in in my field, I'm debunking left or right. But I'm a medium, right? So I'm like saying, this is not real, but here I am talking to a dead person, right? <laughs> so I, I'm this like total dichotomy. I'm very, very unique in that way. Um, but, um, oh, shoot, where was I going with this? It was like, oh, I can't remember where I was going with this, but. Um, about like, oh. you know, about how you have to debunk um, these situations we were talking about, you know, my theme being psychic or, or oh, being right. a medium. Right. Oh, that was it. Right. So this is it. So every medium is a psychic, but not every psychic is a medium. And you can get a ton of information about somebody's loved one off of their auric field in a psychic manner. Right. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you are conversing with some with a spirit and um there well, there's two major differences one is you will get that different physical sensation of that heavy dense thick energy sort of where you're locked in and the second is that when you're in a true authentic um mediumship connection you're giving their perspective their point of views and their experiences so 
if someone didn't share that with them, they're not going to know that information. So they're going to have to go back and talk to the family or friends to find out that information. And then they're validated later. So a lot of times with a true authentic mediumship session, you don't get the validation right there. And then you don't, you may not get it to like weeks or months later. Yeah. yeah. You know, so a psych, yeah. So what that was, was, um, when you take a picture, it's psychometry. Um, I have had happen twice when I was publicly demonstrating where I would, where I took, um, I was doing psychometry where I had the object of someone who was no longer living and that object did bring in the person, but there is a switch that happens, um, at that point. It doesn't happen often, but can it happen? Absolutely. But the information that you were getting was a very strong psychic link. He wanted me, sure. I, I felt like I, I... I almost felt it was mediumistic in the fact is that I felt the want that he wanted this stuff found. His kids had just uh, um, didn't want anything to do with him because of how he had acted yeah. in his life. And he wanted this stuff found. It was his World War II stuff. He wanted somebody yeah. to find it. It was hidden in the house. And I said that. And my friend's girlfriend spent like two weeks and she finally found it hidden in a wall. Wow, that's awesome. That's so fabulous. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and that's what I said. I said it's hidden somewhere in a wall or something like that, yeah. or maybe under the stairs. I don't know. It's somewhere here. He's not giving me. Yeah. This, I couldn't get the specific image, you know. But yeah. I wasn't even trying. It just hit me. It was like one of those yeah. things. Like my, my my wife brought me over there because they she wanted to see if I would know if it was haunted. She didn't even tell me. And as yeah. soon as we walk in, I go, oh yeah, there's something here. And I'm I'm an investigator. I tried to. We weren't going there on an investigation. She was bringing there. But outside of investigations, I I listen to my instincts. I listen to what's going on. I'm interested in it, but I've never gone down the route of saying I'm a psychic. You know, yeah. Uh, I just have those experiences. Yeah, and you know there is there see there is a lot to personal experiences, and to me, it's hard. You can't really debunk a personal experience. I mean, if if it if it if it happened to you and it was authentic and you truly believe it was authentic, I mean, how are you supposed to argue the way you, someone feels? You can't, yeah. you know, but if there's a paranormal claim and you recreate and you're consistently getting the same result and it's like, there's too many natural reasons going on here. It's like, mm, yeah. And then I always, this is how I always default to if there was as much paranormal activity as people claim Let's be practical and let's be logical about this. Don't you think there would be actual Ghostbusters? <laughs> and oh, don't yeah. you think, somebody would yeah. be making money off of it? But people who are, you, I mean, there are, I mean, there are people yeah. that, in a sense, are Ghostbusters. You know? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, we'd also have proton packs the size right. of cell phones. Science you would know? be getting involved more, uh, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. You know, I, I, hmm, I, this is where I get all skeptically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I just, it's really hard for me to believe and for you to prove to me that there is something that's actually paranormal that's going on. But then again, here I am then where I can talk to, you know, to the dead. But the difference is, is I'm giving specific information that can be validated by somebody that I don't even know. You know, and if it weren't for that validation that I got, that I get from my clients, I would never believe that I'm talking to somebody. Yeah, you you know, Crazy. I mean, we just had on last week's show, I think it was last week's show, we talked about a woman being tried as a witch in Ontario mm -hmm. uh, because she took like $60,000 from some guy uh, mm -hmm. as, a, as, you know, basically, you know, being a psychic. And um, the only law they could throw at her in Ontario was a witch law, which I think is a bit offensive. Uh, oh. But yeah, you know, she took them for sixty thousand dollars. Obviously, there's people out there with an intent, and there's fake. Well, there's fraud. For there's sure. fraud. You know, there's fraud. Oh, but yeah. but there's also real. You know, like you, and um, and that's where the mix is. And I also think people's own personal perceptions and energy play into it too. I think that's why it, I always describe it as, as the. The frog that danced, you know, you know, the dead frog, you know, the guy would have the frog would dance, go, hello, my baby, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as soon as he'd like try to show it to people, it's a dead frog. Yeah. That's the paranormal to me. Yeah. That, that just sums up what the paranormal is because yeah. it's like, I, I swear other people's perceptions make the yeah. paranormal a dead frog. It doesn't want to do anything. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. But there is fraud out there. You have to be so careful. Yeah. I mean... You know, I, I'm a healer, so that's the aspect that I always come from. Like, 
is somebody going to leave me feeling better? Or at least even if I have to deliver bad news, more em um, empowered, you know, because people are coming to you and they are so vulnerable and they want to hear things too, specific things too. And you have to just be so, so compassionate and so delicate with their mental state. So there are people that don't know that fine line and there are also people who just don't care. So you got to be so, so careful when you go see a psychic or a medium for sure. I mean, do you think there could be psychics or mediums? They have the ability, they have the ability, but they can, but they're not good people. <laughs> Yes. You know what I'm saying? Is that a possibility too? Are all psychics oh, yeah. and mediums where they have the ability, are they good people? Right, exactly. And, and, and you know, humans are human beings. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, <laughs> you know, a human is a human, whether they have specific talents or not, you know, how are they going to, you know, be as a human? That's, that's how they'll be as a psychic or a medium too. I mean, these are, these are like intuitive skills, not so much the mediumship, mm -hmm. but every human being has an intuition and everybody can develop their psychic skills. Some people just come in already having them more developed than others. But I mean, everybody's got that God given gift of an intuition and free will. So, um, you know, it can definitely be, um, but it feels like f for yeah. being a medium, though, there's got to, you know, you like you have your guides that are helping you. To actually talk yeah. to the dead, there's got to be a little bit more permission or does it have to yeah. be a little more ground rules? Uh, I guess so. I mean, I don't know. You're either a medium or you're not. Like psychic, you can be a psychic or you cannot be a psychic, but you can develop psychism. Mediumship, you can't develop mediumship. It just has to happen. And um, I'm of the belief that um, there are just, some employees of God, I guess you can say, because that's kind of how I see the spirit world and like everybody's guides and angels and masters, teachers, all those, the elders, they're employees of God. And like, there are just some people that have different jobs to do. Um, and I guess they're just meet some meet some people who are mediums that can talk to dead people and some people who can't, it doesn't make one person better or one more talented than the other it's just a skill maybe or you know it's like some people are better artists than other people or some people can't do art and some people can do art it's it's to me it's just that basic i think i think everybody can develop at least enough of a skill to have some kind of connection to be able to communicate oh, with spirits sure. you know oh, but yeah exactly. to, to give to that the, 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 to do a reading for somebody who's grieving and that it's going to take a little bit more, <laughs> you know, it's got to be a lot, yeah. a little bit more specific and a little bit more on point. If you're going to be giving messages yeah. that are supposedly coming from that other person. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, there does, I mean, <laughs> you know, if you're sharing a memory, you want to make sure that the person you're reading for knows what you're talking about. <laughs> Otherwise, they're like, I think I got the wrong dead person. I'm like, that's not my aunt. <laughs> you know? So, um, so yeah. I mean, you have to be way more specific. You have to be in an authentic conversation with their loved one. They have to really, truly know and understand. That's why it's like the type of mediumship I do is called evidential mediumship, where I have to give you... It's like I'm the CSI investigator of your loved one. So I have to prove to you that I am connecting to your loved one. A validation. Right. A valid, yeah, 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 yeah. Because I'm sure you could you know, sit there I, and tell people what they want to hear. You know, <laughs> they love you and they moved on. <laughs> you know, they I could, guess you could, but it's such a boring reading, and it right. like it's the same thing. But isn't it nice to know that your uncle had this brown belt with a gold buckle with the letter M engraved in it? I mean, that's pretty specific. How many people do you know have that? Right. You know what I'm saying? So. No, yeah. I mean that's what you got to give. You got to give the 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 person they got to if they're gonna know it's real. You got to give them some kind of proof. Yeah. You know, exactly. I, I I wouldn't believe you if you were telling me you were talking to one of my dead relatives. I wouldn't believe you until you could hand me some proof. Yeah. You know. Prove it. Prove it. Exactly. You know, because you could say anything. You could tell me, oh, they loved you and all that stuff. Of course, I'd be like, no, they didn't. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, they really <laughs> did. You know, I mean, they could tell you what you want to hear. You know, you know, some people do that. Yeah. But yeah, you need some validation. You need something to prove it, to bring it in. Now, so, you know, for me, you know, one of the things I was like, if I ever had that ability, I don't know if I could do it because, I mean, you have a, you know, you were talking about like accepting that you're not going to be 100% right. Yeah. 
but there's an expectation from people. And you're going to sit yeah. down with them, and they're you know they've they're, you know you've been recommended maybe, and there's an expectation that you are going to be right. You are going to give this information. What what were the steps to get you to feel comfortable to do that? Well, it's mostly development and practice, 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 practice. Because if you're if you're not getting the validation, you're not going to get the confidence. And here's the reality, and this is what I tell every single client of mine. No matter how I'm reading for you, whether it's in person or remote, um, I'm only a human being and I am interpreting information and then translating it. So it's a whole other language that I'm speaking. So there is room for loss in translation. So I may not be exactly right or right. accurate. So there's a, there's a way that we have to work together as a team, which is for you to receive the information in a way that you might understand um, that there might be a connection to this. So like if I give you the name Bob, well maybe your loved one's name wasn't Bob, but maybe his best friend's name would be Bob. It's funny you say Bob. So, we get Bob on this show a lot. We do spirit box stuff once in every while, and Bob funny. is a regular. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's funny you said Bob. And the guy built my house is named Bob. Hey, Bob. How you doing, Bob? <laughs> that's just, it, I saw the look on Rob's face you know, when we were talking. Oh, about, really? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's great. But, but yeah, so there, you know, the people that, we, that I read for, they understand we're working as a team, and I may not be exact or literal. And then what I do do, and, I, and this is how I operate. I don't know how other people operate, but because I consider myself authentic and because I'm not here to waste anybody's time or money, I say, look, if in about 10 minutes, Nothing I say is making any sense to you. You don't understand anything. I'm completely wrong or this just isn't working. Please let me know. We'll end the session and I'll reimburse you your money. I'm not here to waste your time or your money. So, I mean, that and and have I had to do that? I have. Do I do it often? It's not often. You wouldn't be doing it <laughs> if you were doing it often, you know. Right. Uh, but, it, you know, you got to have your off days. You know, you got to have your days yeah, where you're just not into it. Yeah. And those days are very, very hard. They're very, very hard. And I mean, you know, I'm still a human being and that's the, that's the misconception is like people think I'm perfect and all knowing and I freaking make mistakes all the time, but I own up to it and I apologize. And I just, the only thing I can do is say, I'm doing my best. And again, you have an out here. So if it's not working for you, as long as you let me know within a reasonable amount of time, because even though I may not be getting the information right. I'm still working, right. you know? So it's like a mailman, you know, they're still delivering mail. They still have to walk door to door. You may not get the mail that you want to receive. Maybe you got a bill, but he still delivered it to you. So, you know, because cause there's this conception or there's, you know, this thing where it's like, oh, well, if you have this gift, you should be doing it for free. But I'm still working. It's still my time. Um, so... You know, it's like, all right, this isn't working for you. Let me give you your money back. Let me stop wasting right. your time. And here's your money back. That's totally fine. Like, I've got no problems with that. May I ask, how do you turn off when it's time to have your, your time off? What do you do to kind of block all the other stuff out? That's actually an excellent question. Um, thank you for asking that. I, so there's two things that I do. First of all, you have to set very strict boundaries with this, with the spirit world and believe it or not, whether people, you know, think this or not, they actually do listen to what you have to say. If you are in a working relationship with the spirit world, they will respect you because they know that they have access to you and they're really excited. So you have to set boundaries. So like, for example, like I mentioned earlier, one of my boundaries was I don't want to see anybody with my physical eye. But in my mind's eye, I see everything. <laughs> you know, actually, for me, I'm more clairsentient, so I feel things, right? I've never physically been pregnant, but I've felt like what it feels like to be pregnant. Oh, wow. I've never, I've never been stabbed, but I've felt like what it feels like to be stabbed or shot. I, I think I'd rather it, see things than feel it. Oh, no. For me, but see, that's that's the difference between you and me. I don't want to yeah. see that stuff. Me, I can I can mentally manage it better if I'm feeling it. <laughs> wow, yeah, I wouldn't want to feel like being stabbed. I, you know, I see that. I see. That. I've had friends. I've had guests that are mediums, and yeah, they feel. Um, you know, they, you'll get a sensation here on their head and be like, you know, was there a head blow? Stuff like that, you know, yeah. like, I don't want to feel that. No, no, 
no, I'll pass on that. I don't want to <laughs> feel like what it's like to get stabbed or horrible drowning. I can't breathe yeah. or anything like that. That just, that sounds bad. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, I think that's just more of a personal preference. Right. Like, um, so you have to set boundaries. Um, and, um, one of the things I, I don't have to do it as much now just because as you do, I and mean, again, everything is with practice and development and confidence building. So what I used to have was what I call a trigger. I would have, I, I wear ring, I, I would designate, well, it's not even a specific ring, but I would just say whenever I'm wearing this ring, you are not allowed to bother me because I am being human at this moment. Oh, right? so it's I, like your symbolism kind of yeah, like to say, this yeah. is it. I'm, I'm off right now. Leave me alone. Exactly. I look at it as like a professor in university that has office hours. When I take my ring off, boom, you know, door is open. Come on in. Um, so I would need a physical, tangible um, object that I would use as a trigger for that um, as a way to also set boundaries. But um, it's just kind of cool when you have something physical because you can touch it if you need to or whatnot. And there are things you have to do to be human. You have to eat. You have to study. You have to go to the bank. You have to go out on dates. <laughs> go to the library. You know, you cannot constantly be be bothered. Um, yeah, I'm sure I your date life wouldn't go very well. You're out on a date with a guy and you're like, oh hold on a second. God. I got to pass a message <laughs> on over here. I can't even tell you. I can't even tell you because it's not just you. Like, so st statistically, each live person has, like, two to three dead people around them, right? Right. So you can just imagine, just imagine how that date could possibly go. <laughs> yeah, way to kill the mood when you're like, oh, Grandma's here. She's got a message for you. I know, I know. Well, that'll yeah. kill the mood fast. Oh, boy. <laughs> let, me tell you. let me tell you. So you so, put the ring on when you go on a date, right? You know, like, it's it's yeah. on. Leave me alone, Grandma. You know? Yeah, exactly. But I mean, I've gotten I've gotten to the point where I don't necessarily need the ring. Like I can just go, okay, guys, not right now. So I can start feeling like when they're coming by and I'm like, not right now, guys. But again, it's like I have such a trust and I have the confidence in um, my experience with them that they listen to me because they know I will do what they need me to do for them as long as, um, you know, we... <laughs> as long as you uh, follow my boundary, I'm there for you. So it be actually becomes a working relationship. So, so no, yeah. no, I think one of the toughest things I, I, I could imagine, and uh, as a medium, is when you have a parent come to you that's lost a child. Yeah. I, I, I don't know emotionally how you handle that because I'm a parent, and I, I can't even watch movies now where a kid dies. I, I just can't even do it. That's how it, it affects me. I mean, how do you it's, deal with that kind of tragedy? If you, I mean, because I know you've had to have some people come to you with a, that 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 kind of yeah. tragedy. Oh yeah, and pe people who've lost um, loved ones to murder too, right. as well. Um, it's it's hard. It's it's not easy. Um, it's again, it's a practice thing. Um, it's one of those things where there are times it's actually okay for you to lose it because you're being so compassionate and empathic that you're that you just being able to be with them and show them that they're being heard and they're seen um you know that in itself is healing and i think people are pretty forgiving when it comes to that and you know it's it's one of these fields where it's actually okay to cry when you work um, as long as you can still carry on and do what you're supposed to do. I mean, if I'm sitting there bawling, like, you know, crazy sobbing, obviously that's not going to, you know, work, but there is, I do have to kind of do a bit of a separation and, and just kind of, um, go, well, right now I'm working. So even though I'm, I'm just a conduit, I don't have to be in it. Right. If that makes any sense. But let me tell you, there have been times where, because I'll do public demonstrations or like gallery readings where I will cry in front of a live audience. And I'm like, sorry, guys, this is just it. But, you know, I think people kind of respect you, too, when they see it because they know it's real. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's just so authentic and real. I don't know how you could, like I said, I wouldn't know how you could do it without, you know, I mean, you're dealing with that you, kind you of can't. tragedy. Oh, you, you can, like, like I said, you know, I've been shot, I've been stabbed, <laughs> you know, and it's like, I, it's not like I'm 
sitting there writhing in pain next, you know, with them, it's almost like a disassociation kind of that you have to do too. So, um, now it, there's a fine line. Now, how often have you, my, my, you, you talk about people having their, their loved ones or family, like at least three family member ghosts kind of around them or like their spirit guides. How often you run into somebody that's got one that's around them that shouldn't be like, uh, either negative or just they, they just picked up a spirit? Yeah. Well, so here's, uh, you know, it's a really good question. I have a certain belief system with it, and I think it's just because of where I come from in my, um, just in terms of my healing factor. It's, I, I don't believe that people have Oh, how do I say this? Because I really want to be careful how I say this because I know a lot of people don't like me for this. But <laughs> I don't believe <laughs> – I, I uh, how do I say this? If people think they have an attachment or, or something along those lines or there's a negative spirit um, around them, to me it's more of a mental state versus a spiritual state. Um, and to me, it's almost, it's as if their shadow self is coming through and it's not so much an actual, um, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to be, no, I'm trying I, to, I get what myself. you're saying. You know? Um, yeah, I, I always, when people come to me and tell me that I always, you know, give them some sort of a clearing ritual or I guess you can kind of say but then I also have them look at what's going on in their life and also maybe coach them through some of the trauma that they might be experiencing or have experienced that are triggering survival patterns um, so for me it's more of a psychological issue versus a spiritual issue and I, I'm not well liked for that I will tell you that much. People don't like the fact that I say, oh, you don't have an attachment. You just have to deal with something in your life that you're actually not dealing with, <laughs> you know, so, um, or you need some sort of therapy or something like that. So that's kind of where I stand with that. But I do, I do believe in um, the law of attraction. So if you are having a bunch of negative things that are happening to you over and over and well, over again. That's what I was going to say. That, that What you're saying isn't totally against most people's beliefs because you attract, if you're, 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 if you're doing the occult and you're going down the dark side and you suddenly have a demon you think attached to you, well, there could be a reason you asked for it. Yeah, well, it's because you're vibrating at a lower right. level. So you have to raise your vibration because you're going to attract where your what <laughs> what your electronic broadcast signal is is sending out right you know whether it's a demon you know i got to tell you i i am of again i'm of the belief system where i don't really think i mean are there probably i mean can you get possessed probably i really truly believe that the odds are very very low if you're in a healthy state of mind right so it's really more of like making sure that you're mentally healthy versus anything like that. But I will debunk that first before anything. Right. And, you know, people don't like that because they, it's easier to blame, it's it's easier to blame something else versus take responsibility for their own issues. Well, that's why, was, you know, you see, you see some of the, the people that are into the, and I'm not going to knock on a religious belief, but people that do believe in the, the demonic, like to the full blown, right. that there's a, the demon causes me to smoke, you know, and, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. there, there could be something behind it. There's elemental yeah. energies, and yeah. when, I found it interesting when you said your shadow self, because I had a shadow person experience mm -hmm. that um, was terrifying and physically abusive and mentally abusive. And, uh, oh, you know, I know I still to this day don't call it demonic. Uh, mm -hmm. to me, it's almost alien. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I believe in extra dimensions and other entities mm -hmm. that, you know, can, can mess with you. But like you said, it's like attracts like I challenged yeah. something. I brought it upon myself. How did you manage it afterwards? Like, what did you do? I think what am you I said I, it was mentally abusive, everything abusive. So like, how did you get out of that state? What did you divine do? Divine intervention. I really, truly believe uh, um, uh, a family member who had passed on came through and kicked its butt out of my life. Mm -hmm. And one moment of terrifying, <laughs> it levitating me up off my bed and throwing me down. Wow. 
and uh, this flash light, and then I saw somebody I believe is what my uh, great grandfather of mine in my mm-hmm. room, and it was gone. And I never, wow. I, I, not to say I never saw it again because I have so I had some glimpses, but not, to, but it never was in my life. It never did what it did to me then. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's kept its distance, I guess you could say. But I felt divine intervention. Nice, that's good. And that's why you talk about spirit guides and having family member. I totally believe that after that incident. Yeah. You know, I was like 17, and it made me believe that, you know, uh, it got me really interested in ancestor worship. Uh, oh, you, yeah. Because you look back in that, what did people honored their dead ancestors and had shrines, especially in the Oh, yeah, uh, Eastern they still religions. do. Yeah. Dia de los Muertos, baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, and, you know, what is that about? You, have you seen the movie Coco? I, I have not. You should see I, that because it gets into a lot of that idea, you yeah. know. Of family yeah. members and, and this whole other world on the other side, uh, it's a kids movie, but I I kind of loved it because of that. But okay. you know, it's one of my think. So, have you with, with developing this? Have you got to know your spirit guides more? Um, I know a few of them. Um, so yes, but there is. So this is like because I teach psychic courses and developmental classes as well. So I always tell my students. I say, look. If you want to know who your spirit guides are, you can. But we have so many that the human mind cannot comprehend it. And each of them know what they're supposed to do. Like you have one, you have a spirit guide for travel. You have a spirit guide for education. You have a spirit guide for this. You have an animal spirit guide. You have your angel here. You have this archangel. You have an elder. I mean, there's so many that really it's not... Again, here, here I am. I just, I just go rogue with so much of, <laughs> of my work, and people want it, – it's the human ego to want to make sense of things, you know, and try and understand things. But it's really not important for us to know who – really who our spirit guides are and um, who does what because they know what they're doing and that's their job. We just hopefully are open enough to listen to their guidance and just take it. So, and it comes through and so their messages come through in so many different ways. So I always, what I do is I call my entire team, team Terry, because it's so much, it makes it more tangible for me to understand. Yes, I do have spirit guides. Yes, I do have elders. Yes, this contract is in play, and maybe, you know, I've got this contract and that soulmate and that twin flip. I mean, there's just, it's so much that goes on to Team Terry that I can't even fathom it. Or even if I tried to fathom it, I wouldn't be able to live a human life. So building a relationship with your team in general, um, you know, that's the way to go. They're not offended because they understand that we're just mere mortals, <laughs> you know? So um, they know what they're supposed to do as employees of God. They know what they're supposed to do. They do it. They guide us. You know, that that's their job. We don't have to know those intricate details. Do you I have mean, the can't, I, I one thing I wonder is, do you have the same spirit guides from birth for your whole life, or do they kind of change up as you go? So you do, yeah. So you have, see, that's why I'm saying you have so many. So you yeah. have... Um, you, you have from past lives that go with you. You have from these lives that come with you. You have, then you pick some up as you go along, depending on where you are in your life. You have totems, animal totems. You have animal spirit guides. So it's like as you're developing, your team starts to develop and get bigger and into play too. But yes, you are assigned an elder. You're assigned a master. You're assigned like... You 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 have your assi- assignages. <laughs> what you call right. them. You Is there your, like one your... main spirit guides in charge of all the team or something like that? Uh, you know that's a good question. I don't know that I know that answer. Um, I would think it would have to do with an elder. Right. You hope somebody's in charge. Yeah. yeah no. No. They mess. know what they're doing. Exactly. Yeah. No. 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 There is. They know what they're doing. Well. Yeah. Y- we're going to go to a commercial break here, and then we're going to open up the phone lines. But um, 
for people calling in, you of course come in, ask questions of Terry. I'm sure you would love to help people calling in or interested in their own uh, intuitive abilities. Um, but if somebody wanted a reading, you would not do a mediumistic reading tonight. Right, no mediumship, but I would have I would be happy to do a uh, you know a quick card reading for time's sake. Sure. Right, that's what we get, guys. We want to keep the you know phone call five ten minutes at length. So, you know, medium. You, I mean, how long do you spend when you're doing a mediumistic reading? You know, you're you're how long does that take you usually with clients? I do 30 minute readings because yeah. it takes a lot of energy. Yeah. To do mediumship reading. Ooh, I'd like to talk about that. What are the, what are the side effects <laughs> of trans <laughs> okay, mediumship? Yeah. Because there's gotta be, you know, I mean, you know, I, I think about certain people like, you know, uh, Edgar Casey. Now he wasn't a medium yeah. like you, but you know, it seemed to have a health toll on him. You know yeah. these things. Okay. We'll get to that when we come back from the commercial break. All okay. right. Uh, don't forget, guys. We're uh, on Late Night in the Midlands Radio Network. If you're watching on Facebook, so uh, go donate, subscribe, do what you can to help keep this network going. Without you, we wouldn't have all these great hosts and great shows. So we need your subscriptions. We need your donations. Help out. Anything you can do to help would mean a lot to me and the Paranormal Soup team. All right, guys. We'll be back with our guest Harry Huberman, uh, intuitive coach. You can call in, ask questions. Do a little bit of a psychic reading for you and read the cards. Um, or you want to develop yourself and know about your own intuitions and how to develop those. I'm sure she can help you with that. Uh, we'll have the phone lines. You can call in at 219 230 4444. Phone lines open. You can also call in at 00 JBLAN 00. Uh, those are the that's a Skype ID you can call in at our soup live chat. We're still working on getting that video chat working eventually soon. Me and Jeff will get it figured out. All right, guys, we'll be back with you in just a few minutes. Tonight on Paranormal Soup, we have our guest Terry Huberman. She's an intuitive coach. Um, you can call into the show tonight if you have questions about your own maybe psychic development or maybe you feel you're a medium or maybe you want to know maybe if you are a medium. You know, she's like she said, some people have and some people don't. Uh, I find that very interesting uh, from my own experiences. I've never thought I could be a medium, but I've definitely had psychic experiences uh, that could mask, like she said, be confused as mediumship abilities, but I've never felt like I could be. Um, but I've known mediums, and it, it, it seems like it, it, it's definitely a chosen path for people. Because it's a, you're talking serious business when you're saying you're talking to a, a loved one of somebody else. You have to be accurate. you got to give the right information. So Terry's your person you can call in tonight if you want to know those questions. And, of course, she said she would do a mini reading for you if you want to call in. Now, there's a number of ways you can call in. Um, really two. Uh, the phone number is 219-230-4444. And then there's a Skype ID you can call in at 00-J-B-L-A-N-D-O-O. That's o o j b l a n o o. That's the Skype ID. You can call in the Soup Live Chat, 800 Live Chat, Video Skype line. We're working on it. We will get that back up and running. Um, but for now, it's down. So those are your two ways to call in. The phone lines are open. You can call in now. Uh, just wait till we call on you because we'll be in the middle of our conversation here. Um, let's get back to our guest. You still there with me, Terry? Uh, I am. I like that thunder sound. <laughs> Scary. Let people know we're back. <laughs> Thunder's rolling in, people. All right, Terry. Now, we were talking a little bit uh, before we went to the commercial break, too, about um, the, uh, you know, what, what, what you're doing. And, you know, are you getting, when you're, you're when you say you're transmedium, are, are the, do the spirits ever, like, take you over to your, like, they're speaking through you? Or is it just you're getting images and feelings and you're relaying that information? So that's actually a really good question. So transmediumship is just a technique. What I, t what I 
I actually try to do what's called blending, which is a little bit of both where they can take over your body and also where you just receive your information through any of your clear senses. Um, I like transmediumship because you're uh, not transmediumship. I'm sorry. I like blending because you get a nice uh, bit of both while still be able, while still being able to kind of have more, I don't want to say control over your body because that makes it sound really terrifying. Like, oh, a spirit goes in you, you have no control. Well, that's what Hollywood makes it look like, you know. Like, yeah, I'm that's a trans what medium, makes it. and they're yeah, like, yeah. oh, they're like talking, and I wouldn't want that. Yeah, no, no. I mean, nobody wants that. <laughs> Trust me, nobody wants that. Yeah. Um, but what I like about the blending is that you can really get such a good sense of their personality because you're, 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 it's like your clairsentience is on super high charge and you can start doing mannerisms that they might have done with their hands or their mm. face or whatever. So that's kind of cool. Give them a certain look. Have you done that? Yeah. Like if somebody's made it looking like that's my, that's that look. Yeah. Or like, I mean, usually what happens with me is like, I'll, I'll just start like all of a sudden I'll grab a pen and I'll start tapping a pen or I'll start, you know, moving my hand a certain way. And, and my client would say, Oh, that's what my dad used to do. Or, Oh, that's what my mom used to do. And that's just so beautiful because it's just another really strong piece of evidence. It's a good validation. Yeah, exactly. So I like blending. Um, I, I know when I'm blending because I, my language cha- changes and not necessarily in terms of like the tone or the pace, but I start say, I start talking in first person versus third person. So that's kind of cool. You um, might use some of the euphemisms they used. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But otherwise, I mean, it just depends on what your primary and secondary uh, clairs are. Clair is a French word for clear. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I'm primarily clairsentient, which means I um, I feel things, and then clairaudient, which means I hear things. So um, that's pretty much, those are my those are my main ones. That's not to say I don't use other ones. But those everyone, are your strongest go-tos. Those you know? are my strongest that are typically um, that I typically use. It is kind of cool when Claire Alliance comes in, which is smell. So, because that's nice piece of information too, where you can just you start smelling something about the person, and like it's very specific. So I like that too. Those are nice little surprises. I, I swear, the other day I smelled my grandmother. I yeah. was like, it was just clear, clear as day, and yeah. I've been thinking about her again lately. And yeah. I was, it was there. She had, you know, everybody. I've always, I could definitely think I could get the smell thing because I've always had this thing where I could, you know, everybody. I always been interested. Everybody has different smells to me, and yeah. uh, my grandmother had her own unique smell, and yeah. I, I smelled her. I know I did. We do have a phone call on the line. I want to take her. They've been awesome. holding. Uh, who do we got on the line? Hello. Hello. You're on on the show. Oh yeah. I had, my question was. Um, well, who so, do we got on the line? I want to know who, 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 who's calling in right now. We My name is Chris. Chris, thank you for calling in, Chris. Yes, thank you for being on the show, or thank you for hosting the show. This is awesome. I love your show, man. Thanks, man. Thanks for calling in. Go ahead and... didn't want to interrupt you, but we, we want to know who we're talking to. First names are good. Okay, yeah. So my thing is, is I always, like, sense things, like, especially, like, around people, like, the negative, like, energy and stuff, and almost like we're... Like, it's, like, doing harm to me, like, where it comes to, like, friends and family members. So I almost, like, sense that. And, like, it's the same thing on the other hand. It's like, if someone were to do something, like, harmful to me, like, the karma is almost, like, 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 firsthand, like, right, like, if something happens to them right away. And it's, like, always, always happened to me in my life. And I've always been right about those feelings and those, like, I don't know, thoughts, I guess they say, that come to my mind. I just wonder if that was anything. So let me just make sure that I understand what you're yeah. saying. You have a tendency to pick up on when negative things are going to happen to other people, and then they actually happen? Um, towards myself, more or less. Towards yourself. So, so you're saying, so you're saying you, you have these hunches or these um, premonitions of when something negative is going to happen to you, and then it happens. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, it just sounds like you're having a heightened sense of awareness during those moments. 
there is such a thing as premonitions. I mean, you're, you're sensing that something's going to happen. The thing is, is that like what I would, what I would question you is why are you, why does it only happen to you for bad things? Right. Why can't it happen for good things? So like, why are you sort of placing your awareness on the negative versus the positive? That's, that's a weird thing. Cause I, in my life, my, my yin to the yang of that is I am a very positive person. Like I try to do everything in my life is positive. Everything I, everything is positive. And I've always had this negative energy just like come to me about where like people in my life are negative and doing negative things. And like, I almost have to isolate myself from so many people because it's like overwhelming. Well, it yeah. sounds like you're picking up. Can I say something too? Cause it, I, I, I'm, what I'm picking up on this a little bit is that you're, you're picking up on other people's negativity. Yeah. In your life. Yeah. Yeah, I can say that for sure, yes. So that's empathic. Yeah. Yeah, that's... I, can sure you guys hear me okay? Oh, that, sorry. Yeah, I hear you. I, just, I hear you, Terry. Uh, okay. Yeah, because I was going to agree with Jason because it sounds like you have actually... If you can reframe it as this talent to pick up on other people's negativity, what's happening is that you're making it your own negativity, so you're kind of sponging it up. And therefore, if you're taking in their electromagnetic um, energy into yours and, and integrating it into yours, you're actually lowering your vibrational energy right. to match theirs. So therefore, you're going to get those you know negative situations. So something you might want to do is just you know just kind of acknowledge that you have this talent and ability to do that. And then um, when you're sensing that negativity, because this is something that I do as an empath, and I highly suggest anybody who has empathic tendencies do this, is that if you are feeling a negative emotion, because let's face it, we all want to feel the good stuff. Why would we not want to feel the good stuff? But so if we're feeling something that doesn't feel good or feel right, we should ask ourselves in that moment, is this mine or is this someone else's? And the answer, believe it or not, comes really fast. And as soon as you realize it's not yours, because you acknowledges because you acknowledged it, it dissipates, and it completely leaves. Excellent. And that gives you complete and total control over whether you're absorbing somebody else's energy or not. And then, I'll, then you don't take ownership of it, and you don't integrate it into your own electromagnetic field. Therefore, igniting. Uh, the universal law of attraction. Does that make sense to you? Yes, because I would totally just let it consume me, and sometimes yeah. it would be for days. <laughs> yeah, but but it. but it's not yours. Why do you want it? Especially right. since it doesn't feel good. Why do you want it? This, yeah, this is the first time I even like seeing anything like this to ask that question to anybody to even get a good answer. You know, what I mean? like who do you ask? And then I've been watching Jason's show for a while and came across this, and I was like, oh my gosh, I should ask him. <laughs> No, it's yeah, reason to I'm call glad her. you did. I'm glad you did. Do you think that's something that you might um, start to do for yourself? Like if you start, when you become aware of it, like do you think you could ask yourself, is this mine or is it someone else's? Yeah, because I mean, obviously I had no other answer. Like I've been doing this all my life, just consuming, it seems like negative energy. Yeah. yeah. Well, doesn't it feel good to know that you don't have to take it on as your own? I mean, isn't that like awesome? Yeah, it does actually. <laughs> well, your body. Yeah. Uh, I would say, Chris, yeah. you know. Well, you got to try it. Yeah. If you don't try it, you're not gonna, you know, <laughs> you're not gonna get anywhere with it. You got to at least try it. <laughs> well, you yeah. know, Chris, Chris, your body's gonna have a a pain or whatever because your body's trying to tell you something's wrong with your body. Well, it's the same thing I think with the psychic sense. You know, it's letting you know you're being influenced by this. As soon as you recognize it, it's like okay, it goes away. Yeah. You recognize where it's coming from. Yeah. I gotta yeah, ask you, sense. Chris. You ever been in a fight, like either verbal or a physical? Yeah. Yeah. Do you get really so, sick to your? You get like a knot in your stomach, like really sick, when it happens. Yeah. Every time, because yep. that's what happens to me. I've always known I'm empathic, and I pick up on other people's emotions and thoughts. And man, when somebody's putting negativity towards my way, it's like when they're really mad at you, it would make you sick, crippling. Yeah. Yeah, it does actually. You know, and, and I, I, so I totally that's, get what you're getting from. The weird thing too is like when that does happen, like there will be karma towards these people where something bad will happen to them. Oh, so there's like a, a revert. You think you you give them kind of like a little 
mirror back toward like them? Without, yeah, so if like someone was like talking to me or did something mean or hit me or anything like that in my life, you know what I mean? There would be almost instant karma towards them. It's just crazy. Like something bad will happen to these people. I don't know. That could be a good <laughs> yeah. thing. You know, I, I feel like, like I want to say that. Like, I, <laughs> I, I feel like I want to say that's not your issue, not your tissue. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? People <laughs> stop throwing negativity if you're like, bad it's luck. Crazy, but it's, like, it's just so weird. <laughs> I think that's, I don't know why you're complaining, man. I, I mean, like, yeah. I'd, I can oh, think yeah, a few yeah. people that threw me negativity. <laughs> I'd love to see some instant karma come back, too. Yeah, I just didn't know if that was something like like she was talking about. There's like a team of spirits that follow you that help you. And I was, oh, that was probably something I don't, like that. I, I don't know. Do you think spirit guides can be bad? They can be up to mischievous things? Or their rules? I, are you talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Oh, oh no, 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 no. They're there to help <laughs> and evolve each individual soul. So they're kind of like, they'll communicate with each other. Like, for example... My team might talk to your team, but my team isn't going to, like, try and influence you at all. Your team has been assigned to you. So, for example, um, is your name Chris? I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Was it Chris? So, like, Chris's team isn't necessarily punishing, you know, Mr. X who just, like, you know, mad dog him. Um, That's not what's happening. What's happening is is that um, Chris is absorbing the energy and then... (laughs) The, the guy who mad dogged you, his team is like slapping him upside the head and saying, see, look what, look what you did. <laughs> like, this is what you get for doing that. <laughs> so it's not like your team is punishing somebody else's team. Your team is only responsible for you. So it's not the spirit guides. Right. Could be just his, his, could be just your own mojo. Right. You know? Well, I mean, it's law of attraction. <laughs> right. Look, you know, it's like they're... <laughs> They're they're putting something bad out there. They're gonna get something bad back. It's it's, it's that simple. You're just you're just lucky enough that you get to witness it. I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> and maybe it's because you stay positive, Chris. Yeah. You said you stay positive. So when you get this negative stuff and you feel it, you, maybe it's just your own natural reaction. You're just the negative. You get you get rid of the negative energy and it goes right back to them because that's what well, they're asking for. Right. Now the other thing to remember is that I mean. When, when the human mind, or even like our body and our electrum, well, we'll fi- the, the body, there's, ha, ha, this is where it gets kind of complicated. <laughs> there is an auric layer of the body, it's called the etheric template, that will actually mimic the body. So, that, so it's one of your um, layers of your aura, but it mimics the body. So whenever energy gets into that area or that oral layer, you will feel it in your body. So if your body is sensing that there is another energetic, um, field around you, um, it, the human mind automatically deems something that is unknown as scary and dangerous, but it doesn't mean it's scary or dangerous. It just means that it's unknown, but it's just default. It's the blueprint of the human being to fear what's not known. So a lot of times we may think something is bad because we are sensing an energy around, but it's not that it's bad. It's just that we don't know what it is. So by default, we think it's bad. So that's why so many people deem so many like energies bad and there's demons this and it's demons that. And it's no, it's just literally... This is science. It's like there's an electromagnetic field that is blending with your electromagnetic field that is manifesting in your body, but your body and brain don't know what to do with it. So for fight or flight, this is for protection, you know, the body goes into protection modes. The central nervous system is evoked and boom, there you go. This is scary, you know, but it doesn't necessarily mean something scary, you know, so like you're picking up on these, you know, quote, negative energies, but they may not even be negative. They could just be different, you know? Right. Well, thank you, Chris, for calling in. I do have other people trying to call in, so I, I want to, I wanna, but I, again, thank you so much for calling in and sharing. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, thank you. Have a good night. You too, bud. You too. Now, anybody who was calling, like I said, only got the, the one the one phone. Two two different ways to call in, but it's all on one phone, so that's why you get hung up on. Uh, if you want to call back, go ahead and call back. I know two people were trying to call in during that call. Uh, the phone line is free. You can call in. All right, here we go. We got somebody here calling in. All right. Who do we got on the line? 
this is Chandra. Hey, Chandra, how you doing tonight? Hey, I'm good, Jason. How are you? Do uh, I've been better. I'm ready to like hack up a lung right now. I'm just trying to hold it <laughs> back. So you discuss oh, amongst yourselves. You know, it's coffee time. Because <laughs> I'm gonna cough for a minute. But go ahead, Chandra. <laughs> um, yeah, I was. I'm calling because of the several of us were discussing in chat. I had asked the question: Has anybody ever been woken up by? It seems like somebody yells your name in your ear. And it makes you jump out of your sleep. I had it happen the other night. And then several other people said that they've had it happen, too. Mm -hmm. What is that? I, I've had it happen, too, as a matter of fact. It's um, not uncommon. And what it is, it is you are not listening to the way you're being guided and your spirit team is trying to get your attention. So they're literally trying to startle you in a way to make you listen. Now, the message that they want to give you may not be so clear and like right there and then when they're screaming your name, but what they're trying to do is they're trying to get your attention. So what that first does is it just kind of draws the fact <laughs> to now the fact you're like, uh, someone said my name and I don't know what it's about and I was woken up from sleep. So now you're probably more alert and more aware and more open to being guided. I hope that makes sense to you. It does. But the other thing that happened after that happened, because, you know, you, you're in like a groggy state sort of when that happens. Yes. But there was in the background, it was like being in a crowded place or like hearing a call center on the other end of a call where you hear that background noise, but you can't really make it out. But you hear a bunch of people talking. Huh? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, so are you wondering like what that is or what that might be? Is that is that what yeah, you're with this? Was really, really strange. Because yeah. Because it, it didn't I, the background noise. It just didn't happen then. But when I was at work on Saturday too, and it caught my attention, I'm like, going, am I going crazy? No, <laughs> am no, I no. Going nuts? But it, <laughs> no. What it sounds like to me is that for it sounds like the, okay. This is what it sounds like to me. So. A lot of us are going through an awakening right now where we're starting to, um, it's a spiritual awakening where we're actually trying to, we're starting to witness ourselves as who we used to be and see who we are right now. This is like our higher self. And when it's happening in that way and you're hearing it, like it's muffled and it's kind of jumbled and you're not really sure what's going on. What it sounds like to me is that your team is working on your clear audience. Okay, so oh, no. what the, oh no, what do you mean? <laughs> I said, oh no. <laughs> no, 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 that's not a, this is not oh. a bad thing. It's like you're getting an upgrade. This is a really great thing. But again, what's happening is like you're fearing it because you're like, I don't know what that means. I don't know what to do with it. So it's got to be bad. So you're afraid. No, 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 no. So it sounds, this is what it sounds like. It sounds like that they are working <laughs> on your clear audience. And so you should probably perk up your ears when you hear certain songs or you hear like conversations that go by if you're looking for guidance in life. So in other words, you might get the guidance that you need in a way that you will hear it. Hmm. I know there was actually a scientific study done on the, the, the uh, cause what you experienced, Chandra, is actually very common. I've had it yeah. happen. Uh, I bet a lot of people listening or watching, if there are a lot of people listening or watching, uh, they've had it happen. Um, there was a scientific study that tried to explain it as like the, the, the transition between, I think, theta and alpha. It's been a couple of years since I read it. I'll have to look and see if I can find it for you, Chandra, too. Uh, they try to I scientifically mean, explain it, but I, I, I go more along what I've always thought when it's happened to me, it's it's kind of something like she, she's saying, like your spirit guide's trying to get your attention. Okay. Yeah. So, in other words, so, I need to pay attention. <laughs> I would start paying, like, if you're, I mean, it, if you have a question going on in life, you know, whatever that question might be, I would start paying attention for answers, but for you, it feels like it might come in a way that you would hear it. Um, so okay. sometimes the things that I like to do, um, and this is what I teach my students to do when we're working on clear audience is, um, if you have a question or whatnot, 
pose your question and then turn on the radio and he and listen to if it's a song listen to the lyrics of the song or if it's a commercial or whatnot and see if you can find your answer in those lyrics or in that commercial so that's, that's kind of what it sounds like. Yeah, so that's something you might want to do. But then again, I will also, um, like, a lot of times, you know, we see these homeless people and they're not really well in the head and they're just jibber-jabbering, right? Every time I walk I by, I always perk my ears up because maybe, just maybe, there's a, there's a message in there for me. So, um, you know, it just, it sounds to me like your team is working on your Claire audience. You probably have some sort of question or need for guidance. And for you, it may come in an auditory way. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. You're welcome. Well, thank you for calling, uh-huh. Chandra. I've, I've, had that, I've had that experience, Chandra. I, it's, it is weird. I, I, don't, I've been, weird. I, I think I only had it once in my life that I can remember. Um, but I remember it well. And, man, I was kind of like, after it happened, I was dead tired. And I remember I was falling asleep after working. And... Uh, when it happened to me, I was kind of up afterwards. Like, gave me this whole like other energy. Yeah, because it freaked you out a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I had trouble falling back to sleep after it, and it yeah. felt like there was other people in the room with me when it happened. Yeah, and that was what the weird thing was. Yeah. It was like this, this total like zone in, like, and you almost don't even know you're falling asleep. You know, you have, mm-hmm. but it's like you're, I don't know, it's like you're in this other state. It's the weirdest thing, but you hear it, you hear your name, and it like yeah. jokes you awake, but there's nobody there. Yep. Yeah. It happens to me yep. a lot. Oh yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, it's uh, a common I'll, thing. I appreciate if you would send me that article, though, Jason. That would be awesome. Yeah, it's been years. I'll have to try to do some research if I can find it again. But I know they did a scientific study where they tried to explain it and what it is. And, and it's that not sounds spiritual, legit. But, but yeah. No, but you know, science is like the contemporary language of mysticism. So True. there's, you know, it's mm-hmm. like they're it's just trying to totally explain the same thing in their yeah. own terms. Exactly. So. <laughs> okay, well, thank, well, thank you guys. You have a great night. You too, Chandra. Too. Thanks for calling in. Uh-huh. Bye. Bye. Now, I know there was one other person trying to call in. Um, I think it was Zach was trying to call in. You can call in, Zach. The lines are open if you're still there, bud. Um, one of the things I wondered, too, you know, we were getting, I didn't get to talk to you about is... Um, when you take in this information, you know, you, 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 the feeling of being stabbed or, um, you know, or the emotions, you know, and the images and all, how much does that stick with you after a reading? Or how do you get rid of it? Or have you had some that just you had trouble getting rid of? Yeah, there, there have been a few that it was really, um, I would call it, it had sort of like a psychological effect afterwards where it just really pulled at my heartstrings, I guess you can say. And, um, the amount of sympathy and empathy that I, that I had, um, um, and in in those particular situations, it was because I was um, I had a similar situation, or I knew of someone close to me that had a similar situation. So it was one of those that kind of hit close to home, right? Type situations. So it does become more personal at that point. Um, but I, you know, I I have worked really hard in having a relationship with my spirit team that I can trust that um, they will give me the information that I need, only what I need to help my, my client, and that's it. There's nothing else that's frivolous or that needs to affect me in any way. Um, so they protect so, you. They kind of filter what, you, what you're getting. Yeah, because, I mean, again, I'm just going to get a little pragmatic here. Like, why do I need to even know this information if it's just me? So it's really, whenever I do this, I do this for other people. It is literally for their benefit, for their highest good, for their comfort, for their closure, for their guidance. Like, it does nothing for me. So there's no reason for me to kind of hang on to it. Um, you know, but there are, so, I'll tell you, like, there have been some really fun scenarios too. Like not everything's like dark and dire, you know? So I would hope um, not. There, Otherwise you wouldn't yeah, want to do no. it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it just, 
the other thing is that like I started to perceive life just in general and all of the experiences that I have, the good, the bad, the ugly, the pretty, everything as information that goes into my database um, that I get to pull up when I am delivering information to people because this psychic and mediumship, all of this stuff is a very, um, uh, what's the word, like subjective language. It's like this, the spirit world uses your own language and your understanding of things to get the message across. So, you know, <laughs> like I'll just say, like if I date a guy that just doesn't work out, um, and there were certain things about him that I didn't like or certain things about him that I did like, if I'm doing a relationship reading with somebody, an image of this gentleman might pop right. in and I go, oh, okay, this is that information based on my experience that I have to relate to this person. So that's how I just started kind of like receiving my life and all of my experiences. Okay, just got to chalk this one up to information that I'll probably at some point use um, in a reading. Well, you <laughs> know, I no I, idea. I've always wondered that, and I've, I've read books by John Edwards, you know, who's a communicator, and okay. other psychics. I've always been interested in how that experience works and in my own experiences. But uh, I think it was John Edwards in his book. He described it as they have to use your, the, all the, uh, how did he say it? They have to use all the images in your head yeah. to try to communicate to you. They're never exactly. going. They're not going to show you something you haven't already seen. They're yeah. going to show you what you have seen and try to use that as a way of communicating. So he uses like symbolism. Like if he sees yeah. a red rose, it means this, you know. And he, yeah. you know, it's like his own tarot deck inside of his head, but like exactly. thousands of cards. It's your own personal lingo, and um, that's how that's how the spirit world is communicating with you. Otherwise, you're not going to really understand what they're saying. So they have to use that, you know, they're, they're, they have to use that for you. So like, for example, when I'm teaching my classes, you know, I do give them symbols. I'm like, what does a white horse represent to you? And they come up with what it represents to them. So if in their readings at all, it ever comes up a white horse, they understand what a white horse means to them. And what a white horse means to them may be different than what a white horse means to me. But that's where, you know, the practice and the development comes from and that the consistency comes from, the validation comes from, and then the trust comes from. So you're, you're, it's literally like your own language system and your own database of your own yeah, information. That's what I always thought. And that, that definitely can leave room for error because you have to kind of judge what you're seeing. Is, is this what they mean by it? I see a white horse. Exactly. I'm going to think of like half the 1980s glam rock uh, music videos, you know. Um, See, there you go. Yeah. And, and <laughs> and what is that going to have? You like glam rock. <laughs> you like glam rock, right? You know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but here's the interesting thing is that the answer it could very well be yes to both. Like mm -hmm. for you, maybe it means glam rock. And for me, it means victory. Well, how do we know that this guy isn't like, um, you know, entering some sort of music contest? Where he may be in a glam rock band and it, and he wins the contest and, and he we're sings, both we ready. are the champions, you know. Right. See, boom, mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> it could. It's what I always found fascinating. Now we got another phone call on the line. Uh, how you do tonight, Zach? I'm doing pretty good, brother. How you doing? Doing good. You got a question, or are you looking to get a little mini reading? Because I know you got a lot going on. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll do a mini reading. All right. A mini reading. Okay, great. So, Zach, did you have a specific question in mind, or do you want me to just do a quickie general? Um, I do have one question. Um, so I, I'm a co-owner of my own business. I, I co-own a cigar lounge out, um, out in the West Valley over here. In, uh, the you Phoenix might not want to area. give her too much information. Hold yeah. on. Hold on, Terry. How much information do you want him to give you when he's telling you in the question, though? Um, okay, so... I actually wasn't even listening because okay, <laughs> it good. was probably a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, I was just shuffling my cards. Um, so, so Zach, just give me like just a like one question. I don't want too much information from right. you. So I'm going to ask you to give me um, a question, and then I'm going to ask you to say your first name out loud for me three times. So don't don't feed the media. All right. Okay. My question is. How 
do I what are what are or really what is a way that I can be able to generate a large amount of revenue in my business? Okay. And you own a cigar lounge. You run a cigar lounge. Did I hear that right? Okay. Got it. All right. So stand by one second. Okay. So the first thing that is coming up, there ha something has to come to a close. So something, you have to change the way that you're doing something. So hold on one second. Mm. All right. Oof, I don't know that you're going to like this answer, but let's see what, let's see, let's see how this comes up. So the first thing that it, it feels to me like, okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and say it. So it, it seems as though there is, and you have to let me know if I'm right or if I'm wrong. Okay. Cause I will, I will work this out. I will look deeper into it and work it out if I'm wrong, because there's something to this. And I need to figure this out. So it feels to me like you are in a relationship that is actually um, distracting you from what you need to be doing with your job. Do you understand that? And this does feel like it's romance. Do you understand that? E I, I can go further in. I need to just start general this. Uh, um. Can you go a little further into that? Because it's, uh, I'm not really understanding. Okay, so. I really don't see any kind of distraction like that. Okay, well, that could be the problem, is that you don't see that it's a distraction. So, do you understand if I say that you are currently in a romantic relationship, and um, do you, are you able to see that that could potentially be the distraction in terms of you, uh, in terms of interfering with business? I do not. You do not see that. Okay. Do you understand that this person that you are in a relationship, do you understand that they may have some say or some guidance or um, have opinions about your business? Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Do you under, okay, so you may not understand or you may not get that, 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 that this relationship on some level is distracting you from what you need to be doing. So it feels to me that this relationship is hindering. Now, in which way I have to pull more cards, but, um, just to start off, it feels like this is actually distracting you because it also does feel like there may be some issues that you're bottling up in terms of the relationship. So you're not necessarily speaking up your mind in the relationship. You understand that? Yes. Yes. See, so you may, so these are some little things that are happening in terms of like not being able to stand up for yourself, show up for yourself, to take care of yourself in the relationship, which is a reflection of what's happening in the business. It also feels like you're not necessarily enjoying your business at the moment. Do you understand that? Yes. Right. So what needs to happen in order for you to generate more in, inner, um, uh, income is you need to first and foremost, you need to start opening up and saying and speaking up for yourself in the relationship because that does start to help you open up your voice in terms of what you need in your business too. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you need to find a way to start enjoying your business more because energetically what's happening is that you are closing up and again, remember universal law of attraction. So that you are closing up in this relationship. Um, and not only are you in a relationship with this person, but you're in a relationship with yourself with this person. So energetically you're complete, you're closing up, which means you're not allowing other, um, outside, um, what do you want to call this? Um, you're not allowing, the attraction for outsideness, which I will um, lingo eyes for you as um, money. I'm just going to say it as money. So because you're closing yourself up, 
you're closing yourself up and it's having a, a ripple effect in your business, okay? Also, the fact that you're not having fun in your business or you're not connecting to your business, that is stopping the flow of incoming to your business. So the, here's the two things that you can start doing, which were actually three because I just got this information. First thing, are you also noticing that you're not moving your physical body enough or, 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 or a lot? Do you understand that? Yes, uh, I've been noticing that fairly, uh, fairly okay. recently. Yeah. So with your okay, so this is this is a very interesting thing because with you it's very energetic, um, which I'm. I think you might have a bit of a challenge with because it's not so tangible. The stuff that you need to do to um, start your increase for in um, for more income. You need to start doing some sort of cardio to get your heart pumping. Your blood needs to be pumping more in your body. You also need to be expressing yourself, standing up for yourself, showing up for yourself in that relationship. And you also need to find something, even if it's small, I don't care how big it is, find something that you are enjoying or you can even change that to grateful for in your business. Because until you start doing these things, you're having a resistance to attracting more money. So this is more of an energetic thing for you. So I don't know if any of this makes sense. But when you ask that question, this is kind of what's coming up. Do you understand any of this? Does any of this make sense to you? Uh, yes. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yeah. So, um... Let me just, do you mind if I just pull a couple more cards to look, uh, just to kind of see more of what the outcome might be if you did start doing this? Are you okay with that? Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. I also feel like you, this, this person that you're in a relationship with, you need to get them more on your team. Whether you're aware of it or not, they are influencing how you are. And that is part of the distraction with, um, with the business. So as soon as you change and shift how you are with that person, you will start to notice a change and shift in your business. Cause it does feel like once you start unifying with that person, mon there is a change in money and that does come in. And not only that, um, it's almost like you have to find your passion in the job before you find them or in your business, before you find the money, you're, you're focusing too much on the money and then you'll, it's almost like once you have the money, then you'll enjoy the business, but you have to switch it around. You really have to start enjoying the business and doing every aspect of the business so that the money can come. And that's you showing up for yourself. Um, there's also some travel um, that looks like it's coming up. Do you understand that? Do you know of anything or is this a prediction? Not at the moment, no. Okay. So... Um, traveling might be really nice for you too to kind of just reset yourself and give give yourself some, uh, like a break it does feel like maybe a little weekend getaway by yourself might be really good just so that you can tap into your own inner music again and just kind of reconnect with yourself it does feel like you're a bit disconnected from yourself do you understand that yes yeah um and I also feel like the last thing I want to say is you're a little too structured or your expectations or your views of how your business is supposed to look is coming into play. And it feels like that's where a lot of the disappointment is also. So it's almost like you were hoping you'd be further advanced, but you're not. Um, and you have this idea of how it's supposed to be, but it's not, it's not showing up that way. So that also needs to kind of be relaxed. Um, it almost feels like you're wearing blinders. Like there actually are wonderful things that are happening in your business, but you're not seeing them because you have this vision of how it's supposed to be. And as soon as you remove that, all of a sudden you see um, all the wonderful things that are happening. So it, it just also feels like you're kind of missing out on um, what, what the reality is. Um, it's almost like you're a bit too hard on yourself about this and you're kind of like shuffling your feet and you're beating yourself up. And on some levels, you might even be considering yourself a failure. Now, I know that sounds dramatic. They may not actually be the case, but that's kind of what's showing up 
That's like what you're emitting. Your broadcast signal is emitting right now. Okay. So once you start changing that up, so, um, and I really feel like the physically moving your body is really going to help you take a little break, like go away on for a weekend or something by yourself, start expressing yourself with the person that you're in a relationship with and, um, find, start looking at your business differently and start seeing that there are wonderful things that are happening and you will start to notice and it feels like, I feel like I want to say, this is very prediction-y, okay? So you'll have to let me know if I'm right or wrong and I love to say I'm all perfect and all knowing, but I'm not and I can be off with my timing. But I do feel like by next September, you're going to be, you're going to be in a completely different place with your business and you're going to, I feel like you'll be breathing a lot easier, Okay, so, but in order for you to get to that point, it does feel like there are some of these steps that you need to take, okay? Okay. Okay, well, I hope that helps. <laughs> and and if, you, if, if a lot of this doesn't make sense to you right now, sit with it, marinate on it. And um, that's, I usually have people record. I mean, that's why I think this is, this show is being recorded. I'm not it is. sure. You can go back. Oh, okay, great. So maybe you can go back and listen to this in like another week or two. And see if at that point anything that I say resonates with you better. Because a lot of times that's how this works. Okay, my dear? Yes, it does. Terry, thank you so much for the reading. I do greatly appreciate that. So I'll definitely, oh. um, I'll definitely reflect back on this and uh, uh, definitely uh, marinate on those ideas and uh, definitely see where it's going to go. Perfect. Well, I wish you all the best. Thanks for calling in, Zach. Thank you so much. Hey, you uh, too, brother. You take it easy. Yeah, you have too. Have a good night, okay? All right, man. Good luck with the business, too. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks, I appreciate it. Now, I had somebody else trying to call in. You know, on the shows, I got somebody on Google Hangouts, and I have an extra phone line. Uh, huh. So let me see here uh, if I can get them back, because they were trying to send me a message here. Uh, like already, my name is Patty Harmon. All right, Patty. Hold on a second. Didn't mean to say your last name. Sorry. <laughs> I hope it's a good song. <laughs> Hello. Oh, I think uh, <laughs> you were trying to call in, so I called hey. you back. Uh, how you doing? This is Patty. Thank you. Is this Heidi? Pat Heidi. Sorry. It, it 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 like when it puts in your voicemail, it like translates it. So I think it put Patty in there. <laughs> so <laughs> so Heidi, we got Heidi uh, on the line. Um... You still there with us? Yes, I'm, I'm here. I'm just, uh, I'm nervous. <laughs> oh, don't be nervous. Aww. Thank you for calling and nothing be nervous. This is a warm, loving, paranormal family here. We all are supportive and understanding. And uh, you, you just you just go ahead and talk to Terry here if you got a question or want in a reading. How can I um, help you? Uh, well, um, I got so much going on in my life. One, I'm a truck driver. I'm a 48 state uh, truck driver and I'm trying to get things going forward in my life and I'm trying to move from West Texas to back to John City, Tennessee and uh, just trying to get a business going and um, I do have a few family members that passed um, and well, she's not going to do any mediumistic reading. Well, she's not going to do a mediumistic reading. You know, she'll, she'll, she can do a card okay. reading for you. That, that, that's a whole other level. Okay. That's like a whole other <laughs> level. But uh, and, and definitely you check it Hello. out. We got, you know, you can definitely get a hold of her after the show. I'm Right, sure. Terry? And you can yes, work that out. I but do. she can do a, yeah. a card reading for you. Okay, that's awesome. Okay. Yes, um, just finance and love then. Okay. Let's look in 11 finance, or we'll see which one um, comes up first. Sometimes they come up together. So do me a favor and say your first name out loud for me three times, please. Three times? Yes, please. Did you say, okay, Heidi Harmon, Heidi Harmon, Heidi Harmon. Okay, thank you, Heidi. Okay. Okay, do you understand, because um, the first thing that's coming up is that there was an end to a relationship, and it almost feels like you're still kind of like, you still have that in your heart. Do you understand that? Mm. You're still kind of hanging on to a relationship that ended. Do you understand that? Uh -huh. 
Yeah, my ex-husband. Okay, okay, don't tell me too much more. But, um, um, so yeah, now do you understand that he would have had health issues, or are you the one with health issues? What's going on with the health issues? I, I'm the one with the health issues. Okay, okay, so don't tell me much more. Okay, um, stand by. You know, um, the way that it's showing, the reason why you're having a bit of trouble finding new love is because the way that you're viewing, it almost feels like there's still unfinished business. There are words that still need to be said. There's some sort of closure that needs to be had with your ex-husband. Do you understand that? Does that make sense to you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so here's the problem. The problem is, is that because that hasn't come to a close, there is almost this um, addiction type of thought process that you're going through. So it's almost like you're addicted to the fact that those words have been unsaid. So it's not so much that the actual words or the closure hasn't been made. It's the fact that you're consistently thinking about it, and it's that is what's causing the addiction. So the thing is, is that um, you're actually addicted to not letting go of your ex-husband. Do you understand that? Does that make sense to you, or are you aware of that? I'm not aware of that. Um, it, it goes a little bit more in depth than that. Um, okay. I'm, I don't think it's addiction that I'm um, of letting him go. It's what happened. It's what I can't let go of. Got it. Okay. So that's the addiction part. So here's the thing. Um, if you want to be able to move forward, you have to actually deal with this. So, um, it does, and it almost, it, it, there's a sense of, um, and I don't know if you understand this, so let me see how I can word this, but there's a sense, like, it's almost like you feel like you, you can get over it on your own. Do you understand that? Like, you don't need yes, help. Yes, uh, been you 11 years. Your, I'm sorry? It's been 11 years. Right. Okay. So it's been 11 years and you've tried to get over it on your own, but that's not working. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here, I mean, 11 years is a very long time to still be stuck in that same place. And I know that you've tried to do this on your own, but it really does behoove you because it's so hard for us to operate on our own. We really think we can do things on our own. Um, but when it comes down to it, um, we need to be co-regulating with other people because other people have these brilliant nuggets of either advice or just anecdotes or whatever it is. Um, and it does feel like you do need to be working with someone else to get over this because you've tried it on your own. And it also, it what's showing up is that nothing, or it feels like nothing that you have been doing is actually working for you. So it feels like you've spent a lot of time. You've probably spent money um, on just various things to help you get over this. But after 11 years, it's still really on your mind. So what really needs to happen is, um, you know, and obviously you're going to do what you're going to do. I can't make these decisions for you, but it does feel like if you continue trying to do this on your own, you're just going to continue in this, um, in this space of being stuck. And I would hate for that to, for to happen for you because it does feel like you do have a lot to offer somebody you understand that right you do have something to offer someone um can i elaborate on that <clears throat> can i elaborate um, on that um okay but don't be offended if i cut you off <laughs> I'm going to break it down real quick. Um, it's not so much my ex-husband, it's that he took my kids. Okay. But still, it's that scenario, and it's that unclosure, it's that you can't let that go, like that thought process, the attachment to it. 
um, you can't let that go. And so um, it's really important that you get, you have, it, it just, it's time. Let's just say that it's time that you work with someone to really start letting it go because you're staying stuck and you're not going to go any further because it's time you've tried. It's like you've done everything that you can possibly do on your own and it hasn't been working. So you need help. That's what I'm trying to say. And there's no shame in yeah. asking for help. There's no shame whatsoever because what's more shame, not shameful, but what would be more of a shame is if you continued with this, it doesn't make you happy. You know, um, you're having health issues and it does feel like it's, that is from a lot of this, um, that leaves you in a, like this mental state of like reviewing over and over and over and strategizing over and over and over and what you could have done different and how this could have been done different. And so that's where the addiction part is coming in is like what, what addiction is, is you can't let it go. It starts running your life. And that's what's happening is that this situation has run your life, but you need help. So, um, so that's really what's showing up and that's what's stopping you um, from finding love, um, in regards to money, that's not necessarily showing up as that. I mean, it could very well be, but, um, you know, that's a huge thing. That's a huge area for you to be stuck in your life. So well, do you understand? I was going to say custody cases I know can cost you a lot of money. Yeah. But I mean, I even feel like it's more mental health, not even so much, um, like, yes, there's the logistical part of like custody and all that, but it's the, it's, it's the coming to more of a peace or understanding with herself and how, um, everything has played out and the anger and the frustration and all of that. That's what it feels like to me. That's like, it's almost like you don't know how else to be because this is still so much a part of your life. And so that's going to affect every area of your life. So that's what I'm saying. Like, there's no shame in, in asking for help or working with someone. And it's just, it's time. It's time. Ultimately, you have to be the one to make the decision. No one can do this for you. So if you don't do it, that's fine. If you do do it, great. But, um, you know, that's just, that's what's showing up. So that's really, that's kind of like why it's hard for you to find love. And, and, and I, and, and even just for time's sake, unfortunately, I can't go, you know, that much longer, but that's most likely a reason why money is, um, you know, uh, uh, an issue for you too, because you're stuck. You're still stuck in the past. It's just time for you to, to work with someone to let go of the past. Okay. I understand. Yeah. Well, you have all my sympathy. It can't possibly be easy for you. And I wish you all the best with this. All right, thank you. Hi, you're welcome, Heidi. Thank you for calling. My heart goes out to you because yeah, my my children are my world. Yeah, and uh, I'm lucky to have a a, a a great wife and a good marriage, and I don't have, yeah. I don't worry about her leaving me or taking my kids. I wouldn't know. I would be stuck. Eleven, it's twenty horrible. years later, I would be stuck. Yeah. Um, because if yeah, did you have you gotten to see your kids in, in eleven years at all, or did no. you just totally no? See, no. I I would be stuck too. Um, that would be really hard. Have you been alone in this? Yes. You're a truck driver. Yeah. You're out on the road. Of course, you're alone. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I think the I think you know when I when I did tarot, I always felt like what tarot does, and I mean, and reading cards, and it tries to get right to the point of the matter. And I think that's what Terry's trying to tell you is that you can't you can't be shouldering this pain on alone. your own anymore. No more. Yeah. And here's the I, wonderful I, I think thing. I will actually. Um, I think I'll actually let it go when my kids come of age, in which is they're um, about to turn in a couple of years um, be of age. Right. So I've already been through so much and, and dealt with so much. It's just getting them to um, 18 to where I can get to them legally and he won't be able to stop me. I, I understand that from the technical and logistical side, but what about your emotional side? Why might I would pose to you and, and you don't have to answer this, by the way, you can just think about this, but why would you postpone any type of um, alleviation or potential relief in terms of what you are feeling about this situation? Because I can't, I can't <clears throat> because it's, it's, 
like I said, I, I, there is so much more into this than yeah. um, what you can probably see just through cards. I mean, it goes mm -hmm. really deep. Um, mm -hmm. And they're in North Carolina, and I'm mm -hmm. a 48 state truck driver. If I step foot to try to go see them, I go straight to jail. Yeah. Right, but that's and not what I'm talking about. Fault. I'm the victim. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. But right. It, no, I'm talking about, like, some mental relief and, like, talking to a counselor or talking to somebody just so you can learn how to manage your feelings right now because your feelings are completely and totally legit. Like, everything you're feeling is totally valid. That's what I'm saying by, you know, getting some help. Um, <clears throat> you know, so that's why I was posing It's really the hard to do that out here on the road. Yeah, I can imagine. Well, let's see, this is what I was just going to say. Here's the beauty is that nowadays there's technology. So, I mean, I, for example, I do readings all over the world because I have Skype and I have Zoom. So there may be somebody that can work with you, um, you know, over the Internet. So even if you're on the road, it doesn't matter. I would just, I would love for you to find some, some, mental alleviation and relief until the logistics of them turning of age where you can, you know, actually take on that situation and deal with that, you know, that, that of course, but you know, there's still you and your emotions and how you're feeling, you know, and your value and your worth as a woman, as a person, as a mother. And that is not, you know, that's something that it just, it would be a shame if you have to put that off for years, you know, but you do what you need to do. But I, I just, I, you have all my sympathy because it's so not easy what you're going through, you know, it's not, it's not yeah, easy. But I understand what no. you're saying. And yeah. <clears throat> well, thank you Heidi, yeah. for calling in and sharing. Yeah. Thank you. You're yes. All right, thank you all for so, so much. <laughs> all right. And uh, take care of yourself and be safe out on that road. I will, 10-4. All right, 10-4. You have a good night. Copy that. Copy that. That's right. I'm <laughs> not a trucker. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. All right, have a great night, Heidi. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, we're going to go to our last commercial break there. That was a great call. Uh, thank you so much, Terry, for doing that reading too. And that's what I said. You know, it, it, what I've learned about... Um, uh, and whoever, I got somebody else on hold. Hold on one second. We're going to go to commercial break, so just hold on there. Um one thing I learned about tarot when I did it, and I, I felt I was pretty good at it, is that it does get right to the heart of the matter. Yeah. And that's what I felt like yeah. you were doing there. Like, I got yeah. exactly what you're saying, but it's hard for the person who you're reading for to hear it because it, it, pain can be an addiction. Because if she lets go of that pain, it feels like she's failing her children. She's letting go of her children. And, well, and it's just like losing a not, loved one. It's the yeah, same difference. But she and she may not know what to do with her life once that void right. is there. It's so, it becomes so much a part Scary. of it. Yeah, yeah, it is. All right, we're going to go to this commercial break. Um, when we come back, we got another person on, on the phone line. Just hold on there. We'll see if they got a question or want a reading. Uh, last half hour of the show, guys, don't forget, call in 219-230-4444, Skype ID, OO, Bland, OO. Uh, if I hang up, hang up on you, hold on. I Hopefully I'll have time and I can get back to you. I might try calling you back because I only got one phone line, really. All right, guys, we'll be back with you in just a few minutes. sign. What sign are you waiting for? Gozer the Traveler. He will come in one of the pre-chosen forms. During the rectification of the Valdrani, the Traveler came as a large and moving torb. Then, during the third reconciliation of the last of the McKetrick supplicants, they chose a new form for him. That of a giant slore. Many shubs and zools knew what it was to be roasted in the depths of the slore that day, I can tell you. <laughs>
tonight on Paranormal Soup. If you're just joining us, we only got about a half an hour left of the show, less than, and we got somebody on hold. I'm sure they're going to want a reading or have a good question. We'll just hang in there. We'll get to you in just a second. But the phone lines will be open after this call. If you want to call, it'll be 219-230-4444 or Skype ID 00 jbland oo You can call in, ask a question to Terry. Or get a card reading. Remember, she's not doing a mediumistic reading. She's not going to be talking to your uh, relatives on the other side. She does do that. But this is not the forum. You know, it's kind of hard to get that kind of reading in a, in a short span. There's a lot more to it. And, and even with the tarot, there's she, she, there, I know there's a lot more Terry could go into depth with people. But we only got a little bit of time. So she's doing the best she can. And, and, and like I said, tarot, man, it really gets to the heart of the matter with people. I've always seen that when I've had my own readings and when I used to do it. So let's get back to our guest. You still there with me, Terry? I am, yes. All right, we got another person on the phone here, so we don't run out of time. I'm going to make sure we get them on here. Uh, who do we got on the phone line? Hello, my name is Julia. Hi, Julia. Thanks for calling in. Thank you for having me. Uh, do you have a question of our guest, or were you looking to get a, a, a reading by Terry? Um, just a general reading. This is my first time on the show. I actually just stumbled upon it. So. Oh, well, thank you. I love that. That's my, you're my f I mean, I love all my callers. I really do. But first-time <laughs> callers, I think we've had a couple tonight. We've had a few. I love that. So thank you so much. Thank you. Perfect. Perfect. So do me a favor and say your first name out loud for me three times, please. Julia, Julia, Julia. Okay, Julia, money is coming up for you. Okay, so let's see here. Hold on a second. That's always a good start. <laughs> yeah, and for the prosperity <laughs> card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... <laughs> All right. I think Chris is probably going to want these cards, but <laughs> they're yours, Julia. <laughs> okay. So I do have a shift in money coming for you. And it also feel, I feel like, um, how do I, how do I want to say this? It feels like it's going to come in in like one large chunk sum. So it does almost feel like it might be a bonus or even like some sort of, um, familial, um, dividend for you so it does feel like um it's it's coming in in a big chunk form unless you're aware that it recently has happened do you understand this i understand you do understand this okay great i do understand i don't know how far you want me to go into this but i did last week previously get a chunk of money from my family so yeah perfect perfect well here's the thing that i want to say about it is that it does feel like if you haven't already decided what to do with it, it does feel like an investment should be made because there's more money that can come from that. So I don't know if that was something you were considering, but I feel like there's um, more money rolling in from that money. So that might be something you might want to consider. Have you considered that at all or no? I haven't with this chunk of money, no. But I mean, I still have a little bit left over that kind of dwindling and some of it's going to go to my brother for um, something that he really needs. So, uh, Okay. If you can save some of that for yourself and invest it, um, it does feel like it would be a good investment for you because it's almost like the gift that keeps on giving. Um, which is really awesome and I, I'm sure a lot of people listening to this show are going, well, Julia... I'll take that money then. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's really good. Now, also, the other thing that's coming up is that you are a very sweet and kind person. You understand that? That makes sense to you? Or you've yeah. been told that? Or you're okay. So, with you, it does feel like there is potential of people taking advantage of you, my dear. So, um, it does seem to me that. Um, there is a learning curve with you and setting boundaries. You understand that? Yes. Yes. So, um, um, 
with you in particular, it <laughs> I feel really strict when I say this to you because I almost feel like I have to say it this way in order for you to receive it well. But you have to stop being so flimsy and flexible with your boundaries. Like no is no and it's okay. Do you understand that? Yeah, I understand. I have a hard time telling people to piss off. Um, yeah. You know, as, as the start of saying F you is a book that I should yeah. definitely read. Yeah. <laughs> just, just keep it PG. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're um, on radio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was a lady. That's she okay. was. Thank you, Julia. <laughs> I attempted. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that's something that definitely um, you want to start um putting into place. Don't be afraid to say no and don't be, you know, sometimes, sometimes it's not even necessarily saying no, it's just saying not right now. So it's not like you're not saying no, you're just saving it or you'll do it when it's a better time for you. So, um, you know, just keep in mind that when you're saying no, it doesn't always have to be no. It's just maybe sometimes not right now. Um, do you understand, um, if I say your mom, like there might be health issues with your mom? Do you, do you understand that? Um, a little bit. Yes, yes, I understand now. I see where you're going. Yes, I see it. Yeah. So, um, I feel like I want to say that she needs to continue doing any of the monitoring that's being done. So I feel like she's starting to get a little, I don't know if the word is lazy or lackadaisical, but almost like she'd be more apt to miss an appointment. And I feel like I need to, I'm not getting, you know, such information like, oh, it's terminal and, you know, anything like that. But I just feel like she's starting to sort of get into a mode maybe of being a little bit lazy with the monitoring and checking in with her doctor. So, um, uh, so if you can just sort of relay that message to her, Unless, you know, she's, again, you know, we all have free will, so she may or may not do that. But it just feels like it would be a good idea for her to do that. And, again, not because anything's bad or wrong. It's just because it's like it's it, it can be the beginning of a lazy factor, um, which it feels like would not be good for her. So um, so there's that. So, so, yeah, that was a real quickie, but that's pretty much all that, that came up. Um, I feel okay. very strong. You're, I, you know, I, I just, I keep coming back to that, um, future money from your money, from your current chunk of money. So, um, you know, hopefully you will be able to invest some of that. Um, and it would be good to get good advice on it. Um, like see a broker or see a financial planner or something, even if it's only a thousand dollars or a small amount of money, because again, it feels like there's going to be some momentum of more money rolling in. And I just really feel strongly about that for you. So that might be really, really nice for you. Okay, my dear. Okay. Thank you so very much. You're welcome. Well, thank you so much for Julia for calling. First time caller too. I you know did, did did it make sense to you what she's saying? Yeah, yeah, a lot of it made sense. I um I've just turned thirty, and I mean it's probably about time that I start looking into stocks. And my dad was talking to me about how I need to put some money away and such, and so I'll have to talk to him about it. So yeah. All right. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for calling in, and you have a great night. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You know, one of the things I, um, when I uh, first started doing tarot, I would go to this shop. It was like a new age shop, you know. Uh -huh. And the owner loved me there. And she had this lady there that read tarot. And the mm -hmm. lady's like, I want to have him come over here. She says, I heard you read tarot. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I, I'm interested in it. I'm just, you know, because, you know, my early 20s, I was, I was, I was, you know, expanding my mind, getting into reading all kinds of different philosophy, and I was expanding with all kinds of stuff, cultish wise. You know, I'm just that's how I am. And uh, Tara was one of them, and she made me do her reading, and she did that. She's like, she said her name three times, and she she paid me money too, though. She said uh -huh. there had to be um, this energy transaction for permission, and the the name thing she did was another way. She said you had to get permission. This is the way to like verify the permission. So that's is that why you have them say their name three times? 
Um, actually, no, I do it to start the energetic connection. Oh, just to get a connection. She, she explained it to yeah. me as like a permission thing. Like I have to get permission in some sense oh. from them that, that they have to willingly let me give, get the information. That's how she looked at it. I think that everybody has yeah. like their different opinions on it, but it always seems like there has to be some kind of permission or a way to, uh, like you said, connect with them. Oh yeah. I mean, permission for sure. You know, that's, 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 to me, that's one of the worst things someone who's highly intuitive could do is just give unsolicited advice, especially like if they're just out and about, you know, so, um, always making sure you get permission of some sort. I mean, I would just assume that people are calling into the show. They, <laughs> they're asking for a reading, so yeah. they're giving the permission. But there's like, gotta be but, some like legal thing on the other side for them to recognize that they are really giving their permission here. You know, yeah. like. Yeah. That's what she kind of explained it to me. She also said that was another reason for the money, too. Um, I, yeah. I thought that well, was a very convenient the, one. but <laughs> Yeah. You know, the, the, the money is really more for time um, versus, yeah. you know, skill or accuracy. Um, it's, you know, your time is valuable, so... It is that. And that's she explained that, that too, but uh, yeah. she was trying to convince me you could do this, you could make money doing this. I never did. Um, mm -hmm. Me and on, but I've never judged anybody. It did because of that experience. Now we got we got another caller on the line. They're they're calling in tonight. You know. That's so cool. all right, who do we got on the line here? Hey, this is Smog. Hey, oh my God. Hey, how you doing, Smog? It's an honor to have you call in. I'm doing fine. <laughs> all right. <laughs> you got a question tonight, or you want a little mini reading? A mini reading. Okay, it's gonna be mini because we got about ten minutes left of show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Super mini. <laughs> okay, so did you have a question or did you want just a quickie general? A quickie general. Okay, great. So do me a favor and say your first name out loud three times, please. Smog, smog, smog. Okay, smog. And tr trust okay. me, that is, you know, might not be a real name, but everybody knows her by that. Perfect. <laughs> it's as much it's, her name as her other name. It's always about how someone identifies themselves. Yeah. So they can call themselves Buttercup, and I'd be fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Ooh, beginnings of passion. Now, this may not necessarily be relationship, <laughs> though, unless it is by that giggle. Um, okay. Um, you know, I do feel like, I do feel like there is, uh, okay, so when I'm doing this, when I read, I read energy as energy, not sexual identity, okay? So let me just flat out say that. So I don't want anybody getting offended when I say female energy or male energy. I, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't matter who the body is, is attached to, okay? So it does feel to me that, um, oh, do you understand this if I say, like, there's recently been a gentleman? I feel like you've met a gentleman or a gentleman, well, let me just say male energy. I'm going to say male energy, but showing up as a gentleman, um, that you've kind of taken a liking to. Do you understand this? But it feels new. Does this make sense to you? No, not yet. No, it doesn't not make sense yet. at all yet. No. Okay. Um, I got to figure this out because he's showing up in a couple places here and I feel like, so maybe this is prediction-y. Um, this feels new. This also feels like it takes you out of solitude and out of thinking of your head about being in a relationship so much. So do you understand that this is actually, you, you were looking to be in a relationship or you want to find companionship. You want to find a partner. Do you understand that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it does feel like someone is not that far away. So he's in your electromagnetic field. Um, he's entertaining. So this is all prediction. Okay. So you're going to have to get back to us and let us know if any of this comes true or not. But I feel like this gentleman, he, he like, he entertains you. So what I mean by that is he's got a really great sense of humor and he makes you laugh. He's also very kind hearted. So, um, I feel, but I feel like he's different than the other men, um, that you've been with. Um, do you understand that um, in the past, you're, the the guys that you've been with or the men that you've been with, um, that they have not been very fun. You understand that? Oh, yes. Like they have not been 
they've been more serious and fun. But what I like about this gentleman is he's actually more fun than serious, which tells me that you've gone through a change or some sort of um, different way of being than you've been in the past. So you have changed. Do you, are you aware of this or do you know that you've done some work or change on yourself? Yes. Yes, I have. Yeah. So let me just... Um, validate that it's showing up in terms of who you will start to attract. And um, what I like about that is that it's different. And whatever was working in the past clearly wasn't working. So that there's new potential now here. The only thing that I feel um, I want to, um, I'm a little bit nervous about for you is that um, he kind of triggers some insecurities, which obviously makes sense. Anytime we're in, you know, we start something new, um, they trigger our, our insecurity. But it, it just, it feels like you might have a tendency to go back into those coping mechanisms a little too easily. So even though you've done a lot of work, which is great, and it's obvious by who you start to attract because remember it's it's um the signal that we're broadcasting is what we bring in um he makes you nervous because this guy could be the potential real thing now it's not i'm not getting the information as to whether he's your person or not so i don't want to tell you something just because you want to hear it Okay, I just don't think that would be the right thing to do because I'm not getting that information. But what I do feel is like he is influential and he is a teacher of some sort. And as of this conversation, he's going to kind of scare you. So just start, if you can, be aware of how you're being with him. And if you start to notice that you go back to how you cope or any of your coping mechanisms of like maybe isolating yourself. Do you understand that? Do you have a tendency to isolate yourself? Yes. Yeah. So don't hide from him, even though he scares you. Like, show up, say, like, speak your word, um, say who you are, don't hide, don't make yourself smaller just because you're afraid. It's okay to be afraid because it means you're doing something new. It means you're learning something new. It means you're growing and expanding yourself, okay? I also do feel like there may be a connection to December. So you may meet this gentleman in December near December, um, and it, if it's not this December, it could be next December, but it feels sooner rather than later. So, uh, and I feel like he might be a little bit of a, fo um, he's either a foreigner, like not from this country, or he's going to be foreign to you in that um, he's, because he's different. But I feel like you'll recognize him because he'll be making you laugh and he's just really entertaining and you'll notice that he's fun. All right, my dear? Yes, thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. You'll have to let us know if this comes true or not. That's the thing about predictions. You never know. Plus, the information that I'm sharing with you is as of this conversation. So things can change. Nothing I say is ever set in stone. The okay? future is always in motion, as Yoda would say. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you, Smog, exactly. for calling in. Hopefully, uh, come December, Christmas time, you, you get a man toy in your life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get her done. You never know. Okay. Thanks. Well, thanks, Smog. You yeah, have a great you night. Know. Let's know. True honor for you to call okay. in. Thank you. <laughs> have a good night. Um, but yeah, you know, like I said, the card readings always get right to the point, and sometimes they're predictive. So you're reading for somebody, but they're not seeing it yet because it hasn't happened yeah. yet. Yeah, and that's why it's so great to have when I do readings, they're recorded. So right. it's, you know, you know, psychic amnesia is not uncommon. So, oh yeah, I, oh oh yeah, you know. I've heard that from yeah. many of psychics, and I've experienced myself. I've had people that I did do readings when I used to do the tarot reading. I don't anymore, but when I used to, come to me like, oh my god, you said this and this, and it did happen. And I'm like, I really don't even remember what I told you. I feel oh, bad, yeah, but yeah. I don't know memory really hardly at all. Yeah. but that's it was why not meant for me. <laughs> oh, exactly. When you're a conduit, it just goes right through you. But even when, when you're giving a reading to somebody, they're trying so hard to place the information that it actually leaves their mind. That as soon as the reading is over and they're back home, they're like, oh, now I know what she was talking about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So definitely. that's why it's 
great to have them recorded, even, you know, for the prediction factor, too. So, Well, before we run out of time here, Terry, I'd like you to get your information out uh, to the audience. You know, um, I'm giving you the floor here for a minute or so to get out any information you want to the audience, how to contact oh, well, you and all that stuff. Yeah, thank you. Well, I do do private one-on-one -on -one readings, and I do them by remote, Skype, um, Zoom, phone. So if you can't see me in person, it's not a problem. Um, you can book all appointments and check out my website at terryhuberman.com. I'm also on Instagram. You can find me there as hypnocutie. And then I'm also on Facebook as Terry Huberman Intuitive Coach. So even if you just Googled Terry Huberman, I'll come up and you can find me. And uh, I'd be happy to read for you. That's awesome. I was like, if I didn't get phone calls in tonight, I was like, okay, you're going to give me a reading. But we ran out of time. I'd rather take the phone calls. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather take the phone calls. Maybe I have to get in contact with you, Terry, and get a sure. reading, you know, because, uh, no. you know, it was awesome. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, I was going to make you, you read for one of these guys in the panel here. <laughs> yeah, I was going to do it, but I'd, I'd save it for callers. But. Yeah, we always save it for callers. And thank you to all the callers tonight. Thank you, Terry. You're definitely welcome to come back on this show. Thank um, you for having me. Yeah. It was very worth it, me uh, pulling through with uh, being sick. <laughs> I was like, I, I hope you feel better. I will. It's 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 every fall. It's every fall. I get this nasty chest tickle in my throat stuff. You probably go back to last fall on Paranormal Soup's archives on YouTube, people plug, or on Facebook, <laughs> our, our our page, and you can probably find that I a couple shows where I sounded like this. <laughs> it's it's almost uh, an annual thing. Well, thank yeah. you so much, Terry. And again, you're definitely welcome to come back on this show. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, guys, that's it for Paranormal Soup tonight. We will be back next Sunday. Um, of course, I have to take a quick peek here. I, I, I always do this. I'm the bad host. I, I, you know, you're supposed to say, like, who, who you got on next Sunday? I don't remember. Uh, Marjorie Phelps, and I don't remember. I don't remember what. Or was sorry, Marjorie. I'll find out. We'll have it announced who's going to be on next Sunday. But same bad time, same bad channel. Hopefully, my voice will be a lot better by then. Hopefully, not worse. I mean, I think it wasn't last fall. I was sick like <laughs> for like three episodes. I just sounded like junk. Let's hope that doesn't happen again. Let's 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 pray for Jason here that he gets a quick recovery and <laughs> not sounding like this next Sunday. But same bad time, same bad channel on the Late Night in the Midlands Radio Network. Go donate, subscribe, do what you can to help keep this great network work live we need your help to put on these great shows with these great hosts and don't forget these hosts some of these hosts need your help you know if you can add a little extra and subscribe to their archives and they'll do that anything find your favorite host subscribe to them i'm free i'm free i just if you want to help me out help l and m out go donate subscribe all right guys see you next week have a great night